Like yeah. it is a giant 20,000 pound mound of corn in a field. It's you have w- to wait until the deer walks around. Yeah, you the, can't the see it on yeah. the other side. Shoot it. <laughs> he's just, shoot through he's the just corn. climbing up the corn and it's just sliding back down. <laughs> That's accurate. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Deer Grow. Man, it's almost food plot season, Jared, and Deer Grow is one of those products that has really changed the way that we plant food plots and the success we've seen from them. No doubt. I've been, you know, trying to plant food plots my, my entire, you know, whitetail hunting career, which is a little shorter than yours, but the minute that I started or that I, you know, I realized that I could get Deer Grow back into some of these remote plots where I couldn't get lime or fertilizer, especially in the 50 pound bag, you know, format, mm-hmm. so everything was changed. You know, I could get into these spots uh, moving forward with a, with a backpack sprayer and that since escalated to these 40 or 60 uh, gallon sprayers and we're doing upwards of you know five to ten acre food plots just with your grow and having phenomenal success yeah and i mean with the price of fertilizer lime diesel everything this year i mean what better way to get in there and grow a successful food plot at about a third of the cost check out deer grow at deergrow.com and we're back hey yo. on our podcast episode 141 Remember, as always, to like, follow, subscribe our YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, or where you bless, wherever you listen. Oh, I just missed it at the end there. Wherever yeah. you listen. It's pretty good. There you go. Uh, in studio podcast. Welcome, the Creek Kings. Thank What's you, up? Thank you. How about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Welcome, guys. Yeah. People are like, oh, to be here. we thought you guys were just Pennsylvania guys. Oh, we were up in the Ohio boys every once in a while. <laughs> pretty easy. You know? Take a break from Iowa, I guess. Yeah. It's just always, hard, to, hard to get out of it. It's always about Iowa. <laughs> yeah, I wish it's always Iowa. about it's always about <laughs> Iowa. You know, that's just how it is. So, uh, hailing from Columbus. Yep. So, uh, probably about what three, three and a half. About three fifteen. Okay. Yeah. Straight seventy. Straight. Yeah, dude. It Stop is at KFC. Three twenty-two. Nice. A lot of hills. A lot of cows. Yeah. A lot of signs. Yep. That's Some 70. new signs. New signs. Signs we've never seen. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is like, obviously if you're like, when you hear about like Columbus from a hunting area and stuff like uh, you feel like you're getting into, all right, there's some big bucks around here, but between Columbus and here, it's just, it's weird. It's just like flat ag in a lot of areas, like in those like weird blocks of timber that you're just like, I know there's deer out there, but it just doesn't look like it'd be easy to hunt yeah. at all. Yeah. Columbus is weird. Columbus is like just absolutely flat and like 20 minutes outside of Columbus in any direction is like, then you start getting the hills. Getting the hills. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. Yeah. Cause it's, we were driving, where, where do we just, Illinois, I guess mm-hmm. we were on 70 mm-hmm. going to Illinois Yep. and it was like, we're just driving and it's like, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's deer out. It's, it's Ohio. Like there's, there's <laughs> bucks around here. And then all of a sudden you hit that area of like around Columbus 270 and like okay now i'm feeling like there's a pocket like there's deer in there mm-hmm. once you start seeing the traffic counts yeah then, then you're, you're in it. Day, then that's big deer area yep. yeah yeah then Col- you're in columbus it. man traffic counts dude if you've ever been to columbus it is just traffic <laughs> traffic like the back of our state quarter should just be a traffic cone <laughs> it is absolutely wild ours is a pothole in pittsburgh so <laughs> yeah. one, yeah. 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 one big pothole one big yeah. pothole that's it we share that in common man yeah so it's crazy. Have, well, you guys, have you guys been out here before? Never. To Pen- have you ever been to Pennsylvania before? I don't know if I ever have. Wow. Yeah. I've been south and west. Yeah, there's not north. much out here. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we're only heading that way too. So it's just a little, we're just yeah. two hours further from everything from mm-hmm. than yeah. you guys are. Yeah. But. yeah. The only time we're coming back this way is to come home. We would rather be going west <laughs> yeah. for everything. I haven't else. even been to like the middle of Pennsylvania or the northeastern part of Maybe I have. Like yeah, we were just but. at uh, Penn State. For like a day. I'm making a point here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's just <laughs> we we don't really Pennsylvania and West Pennsylvania. West yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Like Dude, Virginia and West it's Virginia. Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, then everything else. We're gonna middle. get Bojangles. I'm not oh, gonna lie. Yeah. There's some fiends for Bojangles. Dude. Yeah. There, there, there's one here and we looked it up. It's another five hours west. Yeah, no, forget that. I We're would like quit after. east. I would quit hunting east, and just yeah. manage a Bojangles <laughs> for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's uh, so good. See, I'm a I'm a Zaxby's guy. Zaxby's really? down south. Yeah, here I'll and we have to with Nick, right? Because you have a peanut allergy. Yeah. Didn't we eat uh, Zaxby's on the way everything. to Florida? You do you have a peanut allergy? Everyone's got a friend. With How a did you make it through allergy? the hiring process here? <laughs> we couldn't. We couldn't eat a Chick Fil A. I would have hired what? one of those. Yeah, I've never had Zaxby's or Bojangles. What? Dude, Bojangles changes your life. I've yeah. never even heard of it. What about There's Popeyes? Like, Popeyes is. It's, it's a couple tiers below. How, how the kids say bussin', but it is not necessarily <laughs> on the Bojangles level. Bussin'. What kind of food is Bojangles? Uh, chicken. Chicken. Yeah. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Mm. It's basically Popeye's. 
Yeah. But like, I like fried chicken. Southern. It's I don't like love Popeyes. Southern. So KFC. It's like KFC. How do you rank KFC amongst? Dude, we just had KFC on the way here. I know. He mm-hmm. says. KFC's B tier. Bojangles is S tier. Yeah. No, dude. Ah. I'm telling you though, we had KFC wait, wait, wait. and I literally S-tier? said S tier. Yep. How does S tier rank to B tier? It's above A. <laughs> I don't know what they stand for, but it goes S A. What kind of report cards were you getting? Satisfactory. How old are you guys? Uh, 21. Uh, You're 21. He's 21 and I'm like 26 or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. 26 will be 27. I was my guess. Yeah. That's why you guys were like, yeah, we're coming here and then we're just going to turn around and drive home. I was like, dude, I hope Kevin I don't fall asleep go. during the podcast. <laughs> just yeah. making me feel old. Jo- uh, Corey reminded me that I'm 30. I was yeah. like, I'm 29. He's like, oh, it's Corey. Uh, I think he's 34. 34, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, 34 to 36, somewhere in that range. Somebody asked me the other day, they were like... um, I don't know. They made a comment because they thought we were the same age. And I was like, no, I'm fucking old. And uh, they said, well, like, you know, what what keeps you going? And I was like, I just like hang out with guys like Nick who are fucking young. What keeps you <laughs> Just going? like, that's like job security, security for Nick. I'm 25. Okay. okay. Yeah. He's not young. So he fits in. Well, that's us. a young enough. <laughs> that's a fair statement because you pretty, pretty were trying to get out of this podcast this morning. I know. Right? <laughs> I was like, I was like, what time He's is like, this? <laughs> I was like, shit. It's I like was, a 25 minute podcast. You're like, all right, guys, let's <laughs> that was yeah. a good one. That was a good wrap up. Well, I came in. So yesterday I left at 430 and drove to Southern Ohio where I have a farm, planted food plots, did all my shit there. It was like 11, no, it was 1050. You're by yourself? Yep, ten fifty. Pulled into a Taco Bell. Closes at eleven. Dude, Taco Bell. How do you rank Taco Bell? Depends on the night. Mm. Just depends on how bad it Does is. Does it though? Later. I'm pretty sure it's very consistent. Dude, I didn't. Me. I hadn't ate since like ten a.m. and this is like ten fifty p.m. I was. It was busting. That'd be. An, food, that'd be an food, ice- food is top tier. <laughs> the after effects are not top tier. Yeah. Well, Ooh, yeah. see, I don't get any of those. Dude. That's like one of the places I can go yeah. where I always feel good about myself. Your body's <laughs> like, I feel. Who goes to Taco Bell and feels, feels good, good about themselves afterwards? Like, hey, dude, I don't, this guy. We yeah. talked about Chick Fil A having some bad after effects. Yeah, Chick Fil A tears me up worse than Taco Bell. Wow. Mm-hmm. I used to work at Chick Fil A. What do you so. get at Taco really? Bell? Really? Yep. Wow. What do you get at Taco Bell? Just depends. I just what want to get, get at Taco Bell. I get two chili cheese burritos, an order of nachos, and if they have the nacho fries, I'm getting like nacho five of fries. Those. Yeah, the nacho fries are ST. Dude, uh, I always yeah. ask, and they're like, "It's not on the menu." I'm like, "I don't care." You, you got have the em. ingredients you to got make em. it. See, I've never had either of those. You've never had the nacho, nacho fries, Mm-mm. dude. You got to get some nacho. I fries. I want a couple Dorito Locos and then like four straight crunchies because like I was a cheesy just, gordita crunch. Yeah, I was just like, <laughs> yeah, I was those are you been to Taco Bell too much, bro? I did a. Uh, two Crunch Trap Supremes and uh, what's the burrito that they have? It's the the grilled steak burrito. Yeah, you get steak from Taco dude, Bell. Dude, oh dude, yeah, me and Justin went turkey Is hunting. That a <laughs> me and me, you're here to talk about it. I yeah. mean, that's that's oh, pretty yeah. impressive. <laughs> that's saying something. Justin and I went turkey hunting not too long ago, like this past season. And there's like a little Taco Bell. It's like the only little food place in, in the town. Within 35 minutes. Yeah, it's crazy. But we went there and smashed like $58 worth of, <laughs> of Taco Bell two days in a row. Wow. <laughs> like it was, Welcome it was life, impressive. Boys. Uh, yeah. it, was, it was an impressive. I could do that. I got the first day and then we went the second day. I was like, all right, you got this well, one. Everything's so cheap there. So it's like. No, uh, it's not anymore. Not dude. anymore. Yeah, uh, they've done Doritos that. Logos Taco is like $3. Three bucks. Yeah, even a, a plain crunchy is $1.98. Uh, they used to be. Plain crunchy taco, $1.98. Like They're just cents. making all their money off of all the crackheads and people yeah. and who me. are high at two, <laughs> at two o'clock in the morning. Me and the crackheads. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. I, yeah. do, I do stop almost every time on the way to the farm. There, there's one in uh, East Li- yeah, East Liverpool that I hit almost every time. We uh, So we were in Illinois and then we went to Kansas, what, two weeks ago now? And uh, we went on a little bit of a Mexican restaurant binge there. You know, it's like <laughs> J- J- Jeremy described himself to the waitress. He's kind of want to brag, but we're a bit of a connoisseur of Mexican restaurants. <laughs> Start ordering in Spanish. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, the last one, the one that we were there, Me with amo her, Jeremy. It was uh, yeah, it was the best. It was one of the best Mexican restaurants I've ever ate. They gave free queso. Well, they just won an award. Yeah, wow. they were voted best in the county. Yeah, well, there's like a <laughs> thousand county. people Attracting in the county. All of the white people. <laughs> yeah. Free queso. Free queso? Oh, yeah. it was it was good. She, yeah. Well, she told us. She's like, well, we just won an award for, for the best. And I was like, in 
the state? Or she's like, well, no, the, the county. county. The county. I was like, <laughs> yeah. This, this area code. This strip mall this area strip. right here. <laughs> yeah. We had just come out of <laughs> this one. This region of the What, the day city. before of which we, <laughs> Jared basically said, hey, I need more chips. And the old guy was like, yeah, once those are gone, I'll he give goes, you more. Yeah. He goes, no, finish what you have. <laughs> I go, all right, dad. Just like pour it on the floor. Yeah. We never got more chips. He just said no. No, that, that one no, failed our. No. Yeah, he was, he was not having it. Yeah, he he was stingy on the chips. So, anyways, that that's uh, that's always a good start, though. You know, good food, whether it's Taco Bell or. I didn't mean to cut you off, though. You got up at four thirty in the what morning. What did I do? <laughs> yeah, and you I were going to the farm. Story. You were explaining why it's been such a long. Yeah, why well, so I didn't old. get home. I got home at like twelve thirty last night, and then got up and went and met appraisers and everything today. And yeah, it's ten o'clock. Take a nap today? No. Yeah. I have kids. I don't have nap time. Mm. Yeah. I took a little nap yesterday. Did you? Oh, five, Son of a five bitch. ten minute. Oh. Yeah. I was I was struggle busting when I got home last night. Naps but, are dangerous. Dude, I me. took a two hour two and a half hour nap the other night. <sighs> Woke up for an hour and went back to bed. <laughs> Do you ever just take a nap and wake up and you're like, is it AM or PM? Oh yeah. yeah. It's been a long time since I had one of those. Dude, if I take a nap, I I I never set my alarm because who does that? You know? Not on a nap. Right. So I just wake up when I wake up and I don't that's really dangerous. set my alarm anymore, kind of period. Yeah, that's why you missed our it. flight almost the other day. <laughs> <laughs> I was knocking on uh, your door to wake you up. Got me on that one. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Typically, I'm pretty good. Like, I, my internal alarm is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if I'm, if I'm, if it's real early and I just go to bed real late, then that's, there's no help in it. Alarm doesn't help. So I promise we'll, we'll talk to your head at some point. Uh, but oh, yeah. we were at, uh, <laughs> yeah. we went to state college for this uh, ag event. Uh, was it two, two, three days ago? Ag progress days. Yeah. And so we're at this Airbnb and it's, uh, basically, Haunted. yeah. Somebody's grandma basically died and then they just started renting out the house. Like, like we were the first guest. Yeah. <laughs> like it had the motorized, on the, floor like, still. the like motorized <laughs> el- chairs Wasn't and that stuff kind on of the death. wall yeah. and <laughs> It was stuff. a natural death. Yeah. Forever, we hope. Yeah. It was cool. But yeah, there were, I don't know. Our, the other guy staying there was like, yeah, did you guys hear this like loud noise? It like vibrated the house. I was like, what the f- are you talking about? <laughs> Yeah, like no idea, but uh, yeah, I felt like I woke up that morning. I was having coffee, everybody was still sleeping, and I was just talking to like the old dead lady on the couch. Dude, Jeez. I just start using the, the stair elevator thing in the middle of the night, just uh, turn it on. Dude, <laughs> I, that's what I said. I was like, if we heard that shit turn on, I was out of there. I was gone. Yeah, so. <laughs> Respect to all the old women who yeah. probably died in the house. Yeah, probably just one. And are watching. Right and now. are watching at the just moment. Like, yeah. All all of the grandma bow hunters <laughs> from, from above. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, uh, so let let's start with something basic. Where did the name Creek Kings come from? Good question. So we actually started off. Well, for those of you who don't know, Justin is my cousin. Oh. Our mothers are identical twins, so we grew up together. Holy shit! Yeah, he was the, the most annoying little kid, <laughs> yeah. but then he well, grew up to be kind of all right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we always, um, you know, he lives on a Creek uh-huh. and some of our best memories growing up are just kind of catfishing that Creek. Oh yeah. So, um, we actually started off just filming cause we just wanted to be like big YouTube stars. Sure. Right. But sure. like it was mostly just for fun. So we would film our fishing stuff. Seven and years ago. Seven years ago, we made like two videos and then we kind of like, all right, this is boring and <laughs> nobody's subscribing. Well, you, were at, so, you were at college. Yeah. I was in college. I was just kind of messing around with all the video editing yeah. stuff cause I went to art school. So I'm kind of a fairy. <laughs> but uh so i went to art school i learned about like adobe and mm-hmm. all of the you know creative cloud stuff and you know i was like hey this is fun so we just filmed everything on our iphone so if you go to our channel go all the way back to the beginning it is hilarious to watch but we just started off as a fishing channel so that's how it started creek kings, the king the kings of the creek mm. so very cool yeah it's a cool name yeah it's, it's unique it's cool. yeah that's interesting. You guys, it, like, I would have never thought that it was like, oh, yeah, we're going to do this fishing channel type yeah. of thing. Yeah. And then we started back up, and we talked about name changes when we first started back up, but yeah. we never came up with anything. So what was the delay in between of, like, we did some of these, and then you're, like, took some time off, and then eventually decided. Like four-year gap? Yeah, it was, like, a four-year gap, and honestly, like, we just had a lot of growing up to do. Life got in the way, and honestly, we yeah, we didn't, like, sit down and be like, hey, let's make a successful YouTube channel, because that's just not how it works. Sure. I mean, it might work for some people. But not us. us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So for for us, we were just like, hey, you know, we actually probably would have never revived the death of Creek Kings unless um, there was one buck and he was like 150 inches. Maybe you can go into that. But like I was into filming and I got into video editing for real. Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, we got a nice camera and stuff. But Justin was actually on a buck um, that he did kill 
um, you know, the, his 183 inch buck, um, you know, we were starting to film those hunts and it, we both just got together and like, Hey, we should bring back Creek Kings, but like, let's film this buck. And then it kind of just turned into like a hunting channel. And Very cool. We still fish and stuff, but it's just like, not as much. we're not, a, we're not the best fishermen. Not anymore. Yeah. We've lost our it's touch. Not, it's not as fun watching us catch like seven pound channel. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm actually glad you like that name. Cause I can't figure out how yeah. to change yeah. the YouTube. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's yeah. stuck. It only allowed us to change it once. So <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's what, so, I mean, I assume you guys grew up hunting, right? No, no, no. Nope. So nope. just Kings of the Creek. Kings Dude, of the Creek. We were fishermen before hunters. And, and is that because of the, like the Columbus lifestyle? Not necessarily. My dad never hunted. Uh, your dad's never really hunted. Um, My family doesn't hunt. His family doesn't wow. hunt. Wow. Yeah, I have a brother-in-law that hunts, a couple brother-in-laws that hunt. But What set it off then? Well, I believe I started hunting technically before you. Mm -hmm. But we were hunting together. Yeah, we were not hunting together. We weren't like friends for a long time. We were just cousins. I mean, we were always... I mean, we always like, we're friends, yeah. but like we didn't decide to just like, family reunion. Yeah, type yeah. yeah. Did you get out one day shop and see each other's well, haircuts, and you're like, hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> so he's a uh, he's six years younger than me. So at that point in time, that age gap was yeah, kind was of a big huge. deal. Yeah, you you're know? 18, he's 12. Sure. Yeah. So you know, I forgot about that. Put they your cousins up. Put your hands behind your back. I gotta go. Not West Virginia. <laughs> I mean, we got the mullets. Put your uh, hands behind your back, buddy. <laughs> so, yeah. So, <laughs> I don't even know what I was talking about. That's yeah. the age of he when you were talking about. Too. You guys weren't yeah. close at first, but yeah. then how you started hunting. Yeah. So, um, I had a buddy of mine. Shout out Warren Mounts. He's like a super good friend of mine. He's like the friend that I don't talk to for like two years and then we'll just get together and fish or just chat and we're, we're like the we're best guys friends. that's all of our yeah friends. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly but he was um he he actually shot a super nice buck um and he was super into it his like his family hunted and my parents actually owned a farm they don't own it anymore um i say farm but it was like a 12 acre piece of property and they used it not for like you know farming but mm -hmm. more just for like wedding venues and yep. stuff and there was actually like a pretty big buck on it, it like the biggest deer i've ever seen um, we just put up a trail camera. He kind of showed me about, you know, deer, deer hunting, the basics of wind and, uh, you know, throwing a pile, pile of corn out. And I had this like women's bow. I'm pretty sure I just bought it off some guy. Matt the sporting goes, <laughs> <laughs> right. No, it was actually PSC. I knew it was PSC, but it Singer. exploded on me. Yeah. Exploded on me. Cause it was like 150 years Pulse old. Shoot explode, brother. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, uh, yeah, I shot, I shot my first buck with it and, um, I did it all myself. No one was there to kind of show me. Is this how to high do it. school or college age? I was high school. Yeah. Yeah. I was like a sophomore in high school whenever I first got my taste of whitetail hunting. And I'll let you explain your first experience with it. And it was, your, well, but real quick, it was your buddy Warren to set you up. And he, just, he yeah. gave you the bow or? No, 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 no. So he just showed me that he just showed me about bow hunting. He's like, dude, you have some property. Like, yeah. he, he might have just trying to be. And he's from some, the Columbus area? Yeah. yeah. And he's, you're outdoor guys. I mean, you, you fish and stuff. So you like being outdoors. For sure. Like, so it's now like, okay, like everybody else. We just never doing entered this. in the hunting realm because honestly, like our moms are, are huge fishermen. Like they, they're, yep. they're the ones who kind of showed us how to fish. I mean, we yeah. grew up fishing with, with them, but they weren't like super serious. They were just like, hey, let's have a bonfire. Let's yeah. just mm -hmm. sit out and. Cat yeah, so yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. So um, we were definitely outdoorsy and, and, and enjoyed it. It's just hunting was never something that I even thought about doing because it just wasn't part of our family culture. Yeah. And you killed that buck? No, this no. buck was like 250 yeah. inches. Jesus. I what? swear to God. We it, have a video on it. Yeah, it, it was a first video that I actually took off, but um, it's called Goliath. And it was this yeah. buck that I had on my trail camera. And he's on this 12 acres that you're... Yeah, but th the way the 12 acres is set up set up is it's by a river holy jesus dude yeah this thing was a just <laughs> yeah i've seen that picture a freaking beast pretty sure it's on the pa forum <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. i never saw that deer. Yeah. we actually made a video about that deer and i mean i just had one i i had like maybe 10 trail camera pictures of it and then it was gone so same, like i wasn't hunting night. this deer i was just like yeah. showing all my buddies and they're all just like but you shot at him right yeah i shot at him and no I didn't. I didn't shoot at. The, I never even saw this deer. Oh, you never saw him. Okay. No, 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 daylight. No, no, no. My first buck was like eighty. <laughs> I get it. I get My it. My first buck that was like sense. eighty inches. So yeah, I don't know. Eh, he's probably eighty. 
<laughs> yeah. I'm um, laughing, but mine was like 21 inches. So I don't know. Really know. Uh, yeah, that was the craziest experience. I had no idea what I was doing, and I somehow pulled off a great shot. This is awesome. Yeah, I couldn't find her for like a day. Instantly hooked after that? Oh, 100%. Dude, the adrenaline, and like I was shaking. And yeah. I was like looking around. I'm like, somebody was like, there was nobody that experienced that with me. Sure. And that's why it's so cool because we're kind of like a duo. Like, if I can hunt with Justin, I will. Mm -hmm. You know, like, eat, like we just do everything together. Yeah. As far as hunting. It's kind goes. of a weird thing because Jared and I have that same type. It's like, you know, he's probably one of the first I call. Like, if I'm hunting somewhere, he's at his farm, I'm on yeah. my farm. Like, he's probably the first I call. And it's like, I feel bad for people, who, like, because it is a, it, you know, it's nice to be a solo out there in a tree stand with just you and the deer. But at the same time, like, if you've got nobody to enjoy kind of that after, or even if you don't, you know, shoot something, you want to go back to camp and talk, like, well, who's, gonna, who's gonna get it? Who's gonna understand, like, at the level, like, the amount of work that you, you know, that the effort, the, the struggle, many, the dude. sacrifice that you went through to, yeah. to find that success. And so when you did, like, I, I'm obviously gonna be the, the most happy for. It. So that's who you call. Yeah, dude, it is honestly one of the coolest things. So kind of bringing it back to the original question, like, how did we restart Creek Kings? Well, it started because Justin actually on the same piece of property that we used to fish at, um, he had like one of the biggest bucks that we had seen. And keep in mind, like it's a it, it was a big deer at the time. It was like well, he was like 150 inches. Yeah, we found a shed. I think he was like 151. Yeah, but you can explain that story of how we kind of got together and started filming again. Yeah, so it was a deer. 2020, yeah, yeah. year 2020 because I killed him 21. Uh, 2020, he was 150 inch mainframe 10. Nothing crazy. Uh, he showed up late season, and I was telling Zach about him because we were kind of hunting here and there together, like, during the rut because mm -hmm. you had killed your buck a couple weeks before yeah. or something like that. But uh, we, I got a picture of him, and <laughs> we decided we were like, dude, we should start creakings back up. Um, I didn't kill him that year. Uh, we included it in the story. Dude, mm -hmm. that, the season two recap or whatever is hilarious. But mm -hmm. <laughs> we, found, we found both of his sheds, matching sheds or ma matching sides, and uh, he was right at 151, and then the following year he blew up into 183 and 5 eighths. Holy put on shit. Some size. Yeah. I mean, everything, time length, main beams, 28 and a half inch main beams. So we didn't actually get the footage. We didn't even get any footage of him on hoof we that never, year. Yeah. But, like, and all summer we, we, we were making some fishing videos. We were honestly just trying to gain some Just traction. figuring out, like, what, what you guys are going to do We spent, here. like, two and a half to three years just grinding out videos every week that got, like, 30 views. It was, the, <laughs> it was like, the most points. frustrating, like, Well, that's a good point because there, there are a lot of people, not a lot because, obviously, we're not a big deal here. Uh, but there are You guys are a big deal. There are yeah, people. We were excited. There are people <laughs> listening to this who are doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, because I, I filmed... Uh, there's some funny. Have we watched any of my old stuff at any? It's, no, I've seen it. It's yeah. funny. Yeah. Like I, I filmed my first hunt in like '99, when I was like, I don't Different know, century. On, on uh, what was that? What they had cameras back? Then? They did. I was 15. <laughs> I was six. 14 I or 15. Not legal either. <laughs> yeah. yeah <no. laughs> I was 14, 14 or 15 years old. That's what. That's what. Like the guys I hunted with in high school. The the way that we got together is like. Somebody said, yeah, we should film these hunts because it was just always so fun. Yeah. Wait, and they wait, were wait, stupid. Wait. Not, I mean, it would have been 96. I was not three. 99, I said. 99. Okay. Well, yeah. That's like, yeah. So yeah. you, but you have to understand, like, at that time, who was doing that? It Nobody. was TV shows like Midwest Whitetail or just like some of the big they ones. Were around then, dude. That's I think they were. It's right probably like years? old they, school, like Buck they Masters. Didn't start, <laughs> they didn't start till 2004. Four? Bill yeah. did. I do feel like I'm, I missed out on that because, again, Hunting was not part of my sure. family culture, so like all these people growing up watching these like you didn't miss old out. west, you know, old, you know, yeah. I well, no, no, I've, I'm just I've saying, seen like, them dude, I didn't find Midwest White till till I was in college. Did you watch? You watch hunting shows before that? They're like yeah. Yeah, real bone tree, bone collector, buck, yeah, yeah, real tree, monster box, and stuff. yeah. And you didn't because it it dude, just was foreign. I'm pretty sure I shot my first buck without even having a hunting license or tag. Like I just <laughs> didn't even know that was pot. Like I did, yeah. I had, I knew nothing. I was yeah. probably wearing like. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, I don't even remember, but I was <laughs> just guys at yeah. the door, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Open up. <laughs> did you watch did you watch like fishing shows and stuff? Oh yeah. yeah. I, I, I used to watch at least. That's so crazy. Like I I mean, I guess it's cause like I grew up hunting and fishing. Like both were kinda <laughs> like in the spring I would fish, you know, yeah. in the fall I would hunt. So like it was somewhat interchangeable, I yeah. guess. You know, but there there is obviously a major divide of like 
here's all the people that fish that don't give two shits about hunting. Right. You know, and then vice versa, too. Yeah. Right. Those networks obviously haven't picked up on it yet because it's like there's it's a lot more of frustrating for me seeing fishing on the hunting show. <laughs> and they probably say the same thing about their, why is there hunting on the fishing right. show? I'm like, right. it's not the same thing. We definitely thought we could do both. And it just turns out nobody wants to see you catch. Sure. Well, you probably can. But once cat. once you, uh, you know, acquire like an audience, you know, they're, yeah. you know, they're there for a reason, I guess. But I feel yeah. like the fishing isn't the same. Like I grew up watching like John B. Lunkers, Perrick. Right. All of them in their prime. And they were getting 500,000 to 700,000 views. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, how many eight to ten pound bass can you catch in a YouTube <laughs> yeah. video before you're like, oh, well, yeah, because cool. it's more entertainment wow. Listen, with those uh, guys. Yeah. You know? Well, not just on a YouTube video, but in life, dude. That that is the thing that sets, in my opinion, whitetail and, and maybe big game hunting in general apart from turkey hunting and fishing. Yeah, it's like and duck hunting. It's like they're all the same. Yeah, yeah. This one has two beards, or this one's like, mm-hmm. whatever. Right? This one weighs this much, but like. I mean, do you find another whitetail that looks like that or, Dude, you yeah. know, and, and yeah, yeah. Th- you know, I'm still not sold on turkey hunting. I've tried it a lot and I just, I've killed a lot of turkeys. I, it, it's fun. Like I take the kids in the, in the spring, but like, it's uh, passion. Uh, yeah, I just do it. There like, are people who are like, oh dude, oh, yeah. I, I would give oh, up we know, we know for a lot turkey of hunting. And I'm like, maybe we're not on the same planet, but you're what not. is going on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. It's hard to it's hard to understand. Well, that uh, that cabin that I'm selling down here in Greene yeah. County, the neighbor bought an awesome like 107 or 108 acres just for turkey hunting, and I'm that like, just... I'm like, do you guys deer hunt on it? And they're like, no, 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 it's just turkey hunting. I'm like, what? Can I deer hunt on it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's well, like, dude, uh, Jed's Jed's neighbor <laughs> owns a big farm. I mean, it's it's probably almost a thousand acres, and he's got I mean giants. Like, there's been some 190s and stuff that have come off of it, and he's just like, you know, let's people hunt. He's just like, I'm just here for the turkeys. <laughs> gobble gobble that's not there are i mean there's plenty of people those out are the kind of friends you want hey, but yeah I, we're we're not going to ride it off until we actually kill one because i was told you, you ever killed a turkey I, nope oh well yeah I, you can't ride it off it's to not kill one. it's not for lack of trying though i mean we done put in some miles mm-hmm. and i and honestly i think that might be what the problem is because we come from columbus ohio where it's as flat as this table sure and we can walk or and we we do a little bit of urban hunting where you pull up and you just climb in a tree and you wait yeah but like you go to tur- turkey Ohio. hunting is like they could be gobbling for miles yeah. away and you, you got to run and gun. and then you got to run off up these hills and mountains yeah. and like dude and then you realize you ran pa- past them and he's yeah. back here yeah, yeah. And i it, feel like a u.s marine in afghanistan <laughs> <I know. laughs> there's times where i'm sprinting their shots yeah. going off on opening day hey, yeah if, if you pretend like you or if you don't pretend like you're a United States Marine or some sort of yeah. like Navy SEAL Special Forces when it's super it's, early and you're walking around with your backpack and uh-huh. your camo, your green light then on. you're lying because you really are and yeah. you're just not telling anybody. It's a it's a cool. I mean, like opening day of turkey and and like getting into that. It's it is fun, but it's just like it just fades so fast on me. Yeah, <laughs> and I it I think. It's hard for them to accept that that's actually just the way it is. Just like it's hard for us to accept that they would love turkey hunting more sure. than killing a big white tail. But yeah. yeah, well, there's a bit of it's hard for me to uh, like fathom that I can't kill one because on some days I'm like they're so easy. Like it's just how did <laughs> they're so easy. But then other days it's like I go a whole season. I'm like, how did I not kill one? Yeah. I'm like, I hate this. Well, you see yeah. deer when you're turkey hunting, and you see turkeys yeah. when you're deer hunting. Mm-hmm. It's like waterfowl. Like there's guys that just live the waterfowl hunt all fall. That's mm-hmm. insane to me. And it's like it's just a duck, like. You, you can barely even see it when you shoot it. Just something <laughs> flying yes, through yes, the man. air. You it's know? nothing I special. Still, I still I, think it'd be fun, but oh, I just I hope that's a mallard. It. Yeah. I always thought duck hunting would be great for my dad. That's that's That was his true calling. Social. Like, Why do you say it's, that? It, well, because he's like... He's a camaraderie he's guy. He's social. He's about the camaraderie. Yeah. Like, he does, you know, he doesn't want to doesn't mess with a scent or anything. Or, or, you know, want to have any kind of a strategy or anything like that. So I think it'd be a ton <laughs> of fun. Like, I, we definitely want to do it, but it's not like... That wouldn't be our main no. thing like deer hunting is. Okay. And it takes it does take a lot of time. I mean, first of all, the amount of decoys and money and everything you're spending to do this. Oh, it's stuff. a massive yeah. investment. Is, it, is there like a trophy mallard that's like, oh my God, like I'm getting banded. this one mounted. Banded. Yeah, banded. A banded one? Oh, because. Uh, okay. Not like you could see it though that. when you shot it. It's pure luck. It's like that's you shot that bird shot. and there it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't yeah. for see no particular it. reason though. I mean, it's like you could shoot a collared deer and it would be the same thing. Just, just <laughs> I think it's frowned upon. <laughs> just probably. throw a band yeah. on it when you're done. Just have a pocket full. Yeah, yeah, just, you know, slip what I mean? it on. Yep, yeah, there it is. I shot a banded turkey. I think. Did you? No, Lauer shot it. Never mind. Banded turkey. Was me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shot a banded turkey in PA. Hmm. It's just because they're more rare. I mean, yeah. I don't know. It's because they're not as cool as deer, so they have to make up a reason for them to be cool. I guess. <laughs> Oh, this one's got a band on it. Yeah. This one has a bracelet. Yeah, <laughs> it is interesting when you get into it because there, it, it's yeah, and you're right. I mean, the guys are 
listen to this and they're like, yeah, well, you know, I shoot one deer and then I'm duck hunting the rest of the year. Yeah, we have, we have, we have two turkey hunting videos on our channel. Both of them are how not to kill a turkey because we, <laughs> we were part, part one and part two. Uh, yeah. At the beginning of the video, <laughs> we're like stoked. We're like, all right, we're getting up early. We're meeting at this spot. We're meeting our buddy at this public land spot that supposedly has just a bajillion turkeys. And then it's like, nah, they're just wiped off the face of the planet. <laughs> And then it just ends up being just one big like Meme. joke. We just run around and like yeah. I'm pretty sure you or me had their pants off. Yeah, at one it was point. you, but don't jump for that <laughs> one on me. Okay, I definitely knew it was me, but Jared's <laughs> Jared's done that to recover uh, a deer head in a flooded area before. Remember when we were shed hunting you in Kansas? You can't oh, yeah. get your expensive pants wet, you know. Uh, well, I just had to walk in them the rest of the day. It was the only, I was uh, <laughs> trying to avoid chafe. I think. Was <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was so. The well, we've done, I mean, I've done, it, it's fun. There's not, I've done nothing against turkey hunting or duck hunting. It's all fun. It's just, you know, want, once you find out, once you figure out what you like, you know, it's like, I just put all the chips on that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, people ask me to go turkey hunting or deer hunting, like during the fall and stuff. I'm like, no, I just, I can't, like, I can't take that time <laughs> yeah, away from, from, from deer hunting to it's just deer, you know. Although we've, we've kind of, uh, have you same, guys mule deer hunting? Weddings. We are going in South less Dakota. than a month. Ooh. Oh! Your South first Dakota. times, dude. Yep, I'm been. so stoked. You should, because hey. if there's anything that can hold a candle to the whitetail side, it's it's early season muleys in a spot. That's stop. my a close second. Any favorite. tips? Yeah. Any tips? Because oh, we're, yeah. we're well, going we, in. Blind. We suck at it, but uh, we've we're killed one each. I think we're pretty decent at it. Are we? <laughs> I I, I haven't seen any mule deer on the wall. We have killed one each. Are you private or public land? Um, uh, we're, we're doing private this yeah, time. I've got a buddy who's got yeah. So you're gonna go on September one, September tenth through twentieth. Okay, okay. So they'll be like just just shut out probably. Yeah, mm -hmm. probably. Yeah. You'll be in good shape. How, uh, how big is the property? He's got a couple different permission pieces that are over ten thousand acres. Okay, so find alfalfa. Okay, yeah, food source number is one. critical. That's where we heard be. water was a big deal. Water, Can well, it, it's um probably depending on what part the of area. South Dakota are you in, like Harding County. Good question. No Northwest got to be northwest for muleys. Yeah. So I don't even know where I'm at right now. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Southwest Pennsylvania. So you've been, um, so the last two years have been a pretty significant drought there. This year, they've, it seems like they're out of it. So water's still critical. The one thing that you'll find in September 10th, you probably still will, is um, like Jerry said, food source and then where they can get out of the sun. Like literally, yeah, I think the, the, yeah, the biggest thing that we, that's it. We food, heard food sources and shade and looked for. Is like you'll you'll be like oh, okay this is this whole hillside shaded or whatever no 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 like you'll look and there's one little bush with shade mm -hmm. and that damn deer is like underneath that's it. that's good that's good advice it's you, not you guys will fall in love with it because I think with with deer hunting it's so like we're we're making so many assumptions and it's so much like piecing a strategy together we think his pattern is this and this because yeah. of very few sightings and a lot of like trail camera information sure. or hearsay or he, you know saw this and I saw that. Uh, mule deer hunting is like you can see everything. Yeah, it's all laid out in front of you. Here's here's the big alfalfa here. here I can watch. You'll them see go twenty all bucks the way up a day there. easily. How, and, how and, fast can you run? Well, and you'll <laughs> hunt from sun up to sundown because you'll just be making stocks. Yeah. all day. That's all you do. It's just that chase them around like making so stocks. Fun. It's a blast. Yeah, it's a blast. Jeremy and I did a mule deer hunt in North Dakota a couple of years ago, and I think it's right up there with one of the most fun hunts that I've ever been on. Mm-hmm. And yeah. we, we tagged out in day two and three on, I mean, smallish mule deer, like yeah, two and three year two, old, three year old mule deer, but uh, Dude, it was our first time we had no, and we were on public land. We didn't know. Anything. Yeah. Was just by ourselves. Got a camper and booked it out there. And plus it's beautiful. Oh, like dude, oh, we live in Columbus, Ohio, where it's like you wake up and you're yeah. like, yeah, oh, the smog of the city yes. and it's just gray skies. And it's, but like going, even, oh. even driving here, it was like, look at that. And it's just like a field and it's like some dude, hills and stuff. We're like, look at that hotel. It. It's like on, dude. it's like on a hill. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> we, was, we, I was losing. We have nothing right in Columbus. Yeah. Right next to the KFC. I, I don't know what it was. Yeah. It was Cambridge. I think it was Cambridge. Ohio. Cambridge yeah. Cambridge. Ohio. Shout out Shout the hotel out on the hill in yeah, Cambridge. There you go. I would say one critical piece of equipment. If you guys don't already is get good glass. Okay. Yeah. Yep. That's probably the most important thing. So just like drop like a thousand dollars. Well, <laughs> do you have a thousand dollars? Well, if you do, I'll, if, I'll tell you exactly. The answer is no. If my wife's listening, but yes, there's, there's a, uh, they're called, uh, what stabilization binos and 
For, first of all, forget the spotting scopes. They're big. They're clunky. It's a pain in the ass. You want to be uh, running and gunning. I got you. I don't know what if it's everything's patented or whatever. But it's from Canon is what yeah, we bought. Well, Nikon makes them too. So there's stable eyes, and it's image stabilization technology image stabilization. is what it is. Yeah. At that distance, it's, got, it's uh, really important. It's a shake. We were just talking about this. We were looking. We were at Vance's. Um, Mine are in my truck. I'll bring them in after. Cool, cool, cool. Do you guys have a van? No. It's basically just like. A gun, it's, it's like, like just an outdoor shop. Okay. Yeah. But there's like a whole vortex section, right? Yep. So we're like looking at the look we're like looking at the stuff. And I'm like a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for basically a spotting scope. A lens that you can get on a camera that does the same thing these, and no. you can record it. No. So I'm like, why would you not Vort just vortex get a lens? doesn't make what we're talking about? These they're twelve hundred dollars is what they cost, but they're I mean that's you, these you, are these you are, are what be watching muleys at a mile. Just holding them. Like, like literally, you know how you see guys driving around like and they screw their spotting scopes and they're and then they have yeah. to get it all set up. It's uh -huh. like, no, it's just Yep. And <laughs> and there he is, a mile away. And you can you, see, and oh, you press oh, a button inch. and it stabilizes everything. Wow. Know? Dude. Nuts. Even if you just get one pair. It's like if you guys it, went it in is on a, a pair together changer. and then you have like your field binos. That's yeah. a problem for us because I feel like I mean, even our ten time zoom binos, I feel like if it's more than like mm -hmm. two hundred yards away, I have to like Sink my elbows, and then I got to no, look no. through. Cause let it's let me put shaking. it this way. Dude, if you get a pair of these binos, there's nothing that you can't see. Yeah, it'll, it'll change your life. You, you will be able to, like, to the inch, score anything that's, like, in your eyesight. Then that doesn't give sold. us an excuse. Uh, During deer season, we'll give us an excuse. It's a business. Like, right oh, I thought he was bigger. Like, <laughs> buddy, you spent $1,400 <laughs> on those binos. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah. they are. Okay. That, that was the one. That was the purchase that we made. Before we well, went I out. had a pair. You had them. You, well, and they then, were your and dad's, then, right? No, they're, he, he got them for me for oh, Christmas. Okay. I got gotcha. you. He had a pair for, for a long time. That's how we He's, learned about He them. had one of the OG pairs like because mm -hmm. he used to have a boat. And so he, they, I think they made them for that. So it's like stabilization on the like boat. like a water setting. So it's yeah. like when it's real choppy, you can still see. That's wild. He had yeah. those for a long time. And then I kept borrowing yeah. So the sure first trip, bought me a pair. Yeah, know. the first trip, you had yours, and then the second trip, I On got the way a home, I think you bought a pair. Yeah, You're like, like, I need a pair. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> that and new broadheads, We'll probably. borrow it. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah. borrow it. Yeah. You borrow it? Oh, yeah. We'll have to drive it all the way back over here. <laughs> you just have to bring it back. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, you probably wouldn't see it again. You just return it. I did just lose like, a... I, uh, I dropped it in South Dakota. Sorry. I, I did lose it. a Vortex rangefinder somewhere in North Dakota when I was doing a belly crawl. We'll just swing around and kind of you know do a grid search. For you. Yeah, it's out there somewhere. See if you can but find somebody it. Somebody probably found it. But, that, but that's critical. That's you know, good glasses yep. probably the most important thing. Other, what than are your expectations? I mean, what do you guys think? It, just like, hey, we want to kill a mule deer. We're going ten days. Our plan is for at least one of us to kill one. And I mean, any expectation on like we want to hold out for X? No. Nah. Uh, well, I, I mean, mean if, we're not going to shoot. If it's a like, dink, yeah, if it's just like dink, small, then probably not. And I said that too the first time, and then <laughs> <laughs> so Jared and I were like, it was it was hot. It was midday, second day. We had already chased a couple of mule deer the day before. On public? Yeah, on public. Okay. And uh, so it's like 90 degrees, right? And we go up, and we, we end up busting a few deer. They jump over into the private because that's pretty much where they live. And there's just like this, it literally it's straight down. And I look down, and there's a buck like bedded in the shade looking away from me straight under the feet. And I look back at him. I was like, right here. Right we're, we're still hunting. We're, yeah. we're checking bluffs. Yeah. Like it's just all these little shaded bluff areas. Right. Mm -hmm. And I peeked down and I, like at first I was like, well, I probably said something. I was like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. if I'm you did. But, yep. You then, weren't sure at first. Then I looked down and I was like, he's in full velvet. So that was a plus. And I was like, I'm and I couldn't see. I was like 10, 15 yeah, yards behind I was like, it. I never killed one in full velvet. And then I looked down the end and he had two baby drop tines. Oh. And I was like dead <laughs> just drop down on him uh, do you, you remember what he said i said how big is he yeah and you said <laughs> i don't know you said 140 <laughs> oh yeah it was not 140 <laughs> and i was like yeah, yeah pretty cool Send yeah it. yeah and then yeah so i did i got up on him and sent it torched him torched him yeah so how big was he I like 110 oh. <laughs> he oh, double dude. drops the velvet double shit. drops velvet That's double cool drops story. for and it was i mean we succeeded it was really cool we were like holy shit we did it like we killed it was a all, I went, I on public land. anything yeah yeah and then he <laughs> shot a bigger one the next day out of I it. shot a three-year-old the next day and well, i mean we hiked our balls off for that we were deep yeah well we saw him so like the way that that went i assume your guys's will be somewhat similar yep we're in the we're in the badlands i don't know well they it be, is it's badlands yeah. there so basically like there was one central food source there was just, well there's a couple of them yeah. you know but there was one giant 
uh, alfalfa field. And it was just like, I mean, textbook, just like just you would, in the bottom just like of the you would river. hope. Yeah. It's like, oh, there they are. You know, but it's so big. It's like a couple hundred acre field. There were a hundred whitetails in it every night. Yeah, and, and the whitetails filter out of the, like the private, you know, timber stuff down here. And there's obviously littered with tree stands. The private guys have that. Mm-hmm. But then the muleys will filter down out of the hills and stuff. Which is the public up above it. Public. And yeah, there's, you know, some, some landlocked stuff and, and stuff like that. But um, so the day that we killed mine was in the morning. We just pulled up to the spot overlooking it. And then it's just, you know, at first light, the bucks are filtering off of the field. And so with those binos. It's crazy, like looking over it. You'd think you'd be able to see everything, but it's like you can scan for a while before you're like, "Oh, there's a there's, there's a group a, of good yeah. bucks down wow. here." And so, and we just sat. And it's know, a mile plus. Once, once you find them, you just you stay on them, and it, that's that's where the that's where the good glass is so important. Very <laughs> slowly, yeah. it's so cliff. important because the di- it's the difference between literally seeing where they bed down and knowing they went into a clump of trees. That was what I was going to say is a is a really important thing is that kind of the whitetail mindset is going to be like, okay, there they are. I need to cut go. them off. Yeah, go, go, go. Just look, get, put them to bed almost, like a turkey. Yeah. Put them to bed, and then you're going to make your move once they're in the bed. <laughs> because if you try to cut them off, dude, th- some of these deer, we just saw, they just kept walking for, for miles. <laughs> like, it, they'll just keep going. <laughs> Please stop. Yeah, they just keep going. So you literally want to watch, to Jared's point, you're watching these things, so they get up to a point, and then you know kind of like, hey, they tucked themselves in. I haven't seen, it's been 20 minutes. Yeah. They haven't come out. Now you figure out how to okay. make your move at that point. So, Okay. I've also seen the strategy of like one person stays behind in spots and then is in. We've tried that strategy. You. Is there like <laughs> poor cell phone service, or is that not the strategy? Or? We used walkie- can't do it in South Dakota. So yeah, oh, North Dakota, we did for walkie talkies. Yeah, we just um, won't record that part. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hands- I'm just texting well, my you girlfriend. Can, you can lost hand- all the footage. You can do hand signals or whatever. I mean, it, it's hard. It's hard. <laughs> We've already got that down. <laughs> yeah. 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 Our, our, our euchre gameplay will come. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You'll be in perfect shape for that. So funny. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it, it's um. That, I mean, those are the the big things I think to succeed. <laughs> that is important. I mean, whether it's whether there's hand motions or whatever, that's the hardest part. Is like you're like, okay, there he is. There he's bedded down. I'm gonna go up and around. But like once you get over there, it's like the, it looks totally different. You're like, yeah. Well, and you'll see like Jared made a, a stock on one. I watched this buck go into a cliff line, like just a small cliff line and bed down because he bumped them. And these, the, here's the thing. These muleys, most of the time, if you bump them, they'll run a little ways, then they'll lay right back, right back awesome. down. They don't go far. So I'm watching this thing, and Bino's across it. He goes up over the top to make su- – and as he's doing that, that shade's going away, right? Because the yeah. sun's moving. So they're so they're they're moving. And so, like, I'm almost staring. At, and I took my eyes off him for two minutes, and I went back, and he had slipped out. Like, it's just – and it's like he gets there, and then you realize there's this huge crevice that goes up behind yeah. that that I couldn't tell from my mm-hmm. angle. Yeah. So you end up, you were like, he's got to be there. And it's like, no, he went up this. Sounds like you just got to take your shot, and you, there's <laughs> probably a lot of luck with it. Sounds like. Yes. Yeah. But you, it, I think if they stay in the Badlands and you watch them come out, you've got a much better chance there than uh, the last year we were there. So not last year, but two years ago. Uh, it was super droughty. And so all the cows had moved up into the badlands for grazing, and mm-hmm. it pushed all the muleys into the grasslands, <laughs> which was nearly fucking impossible to stock a damn buck. Because, I mean, they're literally bedded in grass yeah. a mile away. You take two steps, and they're like, fuck this. Gone. Yeah. The, the terrain matters. You know, you want to hunt them in stockable conditions. Yeah, yeah. which is what's awesome about <clears throat> the badlands. Because literally, like mine, I shot straight down. Jared shot his at 10 yards, yeah. you know. After I snuck up on him. Yep, went down in. Yeah, sneaky Ooh, boy. You want to talk talk about the old uh, sneak approach technique? No shoes. Yeah. Well, just you know, I've seen that actually. I was just tattooing I mean, a, a buddy who was kind of saying the same things you guys are. Either double socks or we got yeah. what are our what were. I got, uh, they were way too expensive. They're basically socks dipped in like rubber coating on so the bottom. Can, yeah, because like the ones at the bounce houses? Yeah, because there's cactus kind everywhere. Or the one at the mental institute. <laughs> same thing. Same thing. Thick, thicker, though. Like it's more yeah. of a. It's like the old, you know, like the old people's slippers that are like a slipper yeah. sock? Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. Okay. But it's because there's cactus that you'll. They're kind of like that. So put just, up through I if you're just, just wearing your sock. Kept a pair. Um, uh, like rolled up in my, my bino harness or whatever. So whenever like you're in, you know, stocking range, basically, I just kicked the boots off, which was tough because I had. It I, sounds stupid, but it's like it, you're amazed at how oh, much quieter you can be. Difference, yeah. 
That's how they did it back in the day. So just look oh, yeah. in the stocking yeah. mode. Yeah, Straight exactly. engine mode. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, just, you know, every situation is different, you know? So, like, m mine, basically, we were, like, it was at the very end of the day, and we had stocked all the way down through this uh, giant ravine, and we're getting close to, like, where we knew the bucks that we'd seen come off the field would be. Like, mm -hmm. they're, they're in here. And we come up over, and, th you know, there he, there he is. There's this buck that I shot. He's standing, he's, like, looking right at us, and we just basically fell back. And uh, they're not as smart as as white. They're just not. Is it says. because they're just not used to seeing people? Yeah, I don't think they, they ever see people. That, or they see cattle guys and they're just like, they don't. One of the things that them. we under, like, I don't know about urban deer because we just kind of got a little bit into the urban game um, this last this last year. And I don't know if the deer are smarter or smarter. I yeah. was about to say stupider, which, <laughs> which would have made me look stupid. More but, stupider? Uh, right. Or just a little, I, I can't tell if they're just so used to humans mm -hmm. and like the scent of just being so close to people all the time that they're, they're just really good at reading if it's a threatening situation. Mm -hmm. Sure. And the does though, the does. Yeah. Like there was a point in time where I was hunting like literally maybe 40 yards behind this guy's house every morning he'd watch like tucker carlson and i just kind of like mm -hmm. watch it too while i was waiting for my deer to come but um <laughs> the deer would just kind of like go around and like they would be aware that there was like a person that was there or maybe mm -hmm. is there but like they're a little bit cautious but like they look in there like there's they, no real threat th th yeah they have three or four areas where they would check to see if there's somebody in their backyard and then they you know they they, they would have just, no ability to look up right it's like they just it just oh like they they don't even think about it. Yeah. Whereas you know these big rural deer, they're like, yeah, somebody two hundred yards away, hole. and they're like, oh, you know, yeah, the does in rural areas, I believe. So like again, I guess what I'm saying is I don't know if they're smarter or not, but they just yeah, have way more I interactions. Think, with yeah, humans, I think know, they're just, just used to. I mean, non lethal yeah. interactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, because it's the the whole point of those areas is that the deer just get older mm -hmm. right and they because the hunting pressure is there yeah sure they probably get hit by a car more than they get shot um you know and, and in most cases like if you're hunting a rural area then it'd be like if that buck got to five years old he's freaking a ghost mm -hmm. yeah. you know he, he you're gonna have to wait till he makes a mistake to get him but in i think a lot of those you know urban areas is that they're just get a lot of them just get old that mm -hmm. doesn't mean that it's not smart. I just think that he's smart to certain things. Like, hey, I'm not going to cross this road during busy right. time of day. Right. Do, do you think, though, that the urban thing is, like, more people are doing it? Like, you oh, think there's unfortunately, more? Unfortunately, yes. Yeah, more pressure. You and, think that's seek one? Oh, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> yeah, I do think so. I think they Not blaming them. I'm no. just, that, it, we talk about it all the time with, like, the hunting public and public I, land. I and know, we make jokes to them all the time. Yeah. Like, you ruined urban. <laughs> yeah. I do think that. It's a combination of two things. Social media mm -hmm. and just the fact that it's such a competition now where like all these guys want to be out here and be somebody like Seek One or they want sure. they you know, they see that their friend got a big a big buck. Like before that stuff just wasn't out there for everyone to see, but now that social media and you know, the YouTube thing and everyone wants to be and kill this big buck and uh, and you can do it. it. You can do it. it. Everybody's like, look at this deer in my backyard. Yeah. Well, that's Before, what I was going to say. It's like these, these you know, urban people that are, they have no idea what they're filming. And everybody's like, that's a 200 inch deer. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they're like, look at this big buck. And it's like, no, that's a 200 inch deer. Look at this majestic beast. Yeah. I've never heard this beautiful yeah. animal. And Meanwhile, there's like seven guys them. like loading up in a truck, yeah. like heading that direction. Dude, it's wild. Yeah. It's wild. So um, there was a video that we made last year about um, a a buck in Columbus, he was like 240 inches, but like I think he went 241 official, so dude, you were pretty dang close, dude. dude. It was a giant, and it was actually like five minutes from my front door. <laughs> so, I needless to say, I got a little bit excited and I began to realize how many people were actually after this buck and how big how name people clout behind this deer. And I was like, You said dude, big name people, really? Yeah. yeah, so like it was like a bunch of people were after this buck and. Like realistically after it, or they just knew of it, oh, no. and now they're trying to figure out yeah. access. So you have to understand People paying for ungodly amounts for access. You have wow. to yeah. an acre or you have to understand that poaching is a real thing, and that not everybody has ethics, and not if like. For every person who was actually trying to kill that deer, there might have been ten people who were like trying to poach that deer. Mm -hmm. Because especially it's just a, two, a big dog, especially yeah. a two forty. Like, yeah, right. And you would think that would be. I mean, because you know, I'm sure all of us at this table, obviously, you guys have have seen a giant buck, and then it's just like you don't 
where to go. Right. And it's like if somebody shot it during hunting season, you know about it. It mm-hmm. was a giant. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's just when you don't hear about it, it's like, okay, maybe it just died and nobody ever found it. Right. But I, Even a very unlikely. A very unlikely. With the, with the 240 that I yeah, showed you guys, the, we had a couple people reach out. But that deer's still not confirmed. We Yeah, we had a couple people reach out and say, was that buck, like, between this road and this road? And I was like, yeah. And mm. then they just ghost us. So it's like wow. they probably know of somebody who killed it, or maybe they did. I'm not sure. But I think a lot of this big urban deer, you know, they get poached, so which somebody, is kind of not not talked about a lot. And you just don't hear about it. Right. Because so not Somebody known. did kill it then? or so It was killed. Yeah, the 240. Yeah. It's gone, right? Yeah. Where did yeah. the confirmed score come from? Uh, it was at the, yeah, it was also at the, um, he had a buddy, I believe he had a buddy bring it to one of Ohio shows. Not to throw that guy, whoever he is under the bus, but I mean, does that one feel non-legit? No, it feels legit. I guess ODNR did a huge investigation. They did. That's kind of why we backed off. There was a lot of heat. Yeah. Dude, we, I was personally, because, you know, I was the one that actually like put effort into trying to get permission and and all all that. And I made a video and it like, it got like quarter million views in a couple weeks three or four hundred thousand yeah. yeah and then um i was getting like facebook messages like threatening messages like you know they wanted if, to f- if, people wanted to fight us yeah fight to us what, to lay like, off of it yeah, yeah well not not even that it was the people that lived there they were like just don't don't come here the deer meant a lot to the yeah the deer meant a lot to the community because you know yeah. it's a majestic beast that you know and it's uh, like sure. dude well, if it's i will any, forever any memorialize range, him on my wall yeah <laughs> any free <laughs> range deer yeah. <laughs> any free range deer can get the smoke and that's just going to be my motto like well i mean it, the odds are is that deer is going to get clipped by somebody's mercedes sure. benz before it gets clipped by an arrow yeah, yeah. well we had like one like that recently there was an albino deer yeah uh, just south north south? of here just north of here uh that was probably like eight Eight, eight or nine, eight or nine like Jeez. again, very community, like and not like, but it was probably like 130 inch, in a, like in a hunter heavy full, community, full albino. They Everybody agreed in the area it, yeah, to yeah. pass it. Well, that's nobody, cool. should, and then somebody poached it. <laughs> yeah, that's it's hard un- to get away. That's with that the one, unfortunate though. truth, though. Like if you really think about it, like in the day and age where everyone's taking videos and sure. it, everybody's got a beautiful camera on their phone. We think about technology with poaching. I mean, you got. These insane thermals and high power. The thir- thermal drones. Like if you want to poach a 240 inch deer. Oh yeah. If you spend an it's hour on social hard. media, you can do it. Yeah, it's you, not that hard. Yeah. You just Get you know where he is. Head. It's do you want to do it or not? How how, uh, how seriously do you think poachers are taking it though? Like I doesn't it no seem idea. like most of them are like you know just a couple beers in. Let's go out and see what we can shoot. I, I would think like a lot of it just like, it's not like hey, let's invest field, big yeah. money into like yeah let's go find because I mean if you are doing it repetitively at some point. You know, especially if you're killing giant bucks, you're you're gonna get caught. And it can't mean the same like killing it a two forty like that. It's like oh, it's you a would, giant deer, but you, you didn't do it. The you right can't way. tell anybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. that's what that's I'm just saying. Gonna have to live in your shed. Yeah, so I yeah. I you honestly can't say don't anything. Know. Yeah. What's the what's the point? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just good, self gratification. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's the ones who want the gratification who end up saying, oh, yep, killed this one. Just that's what happened with that albino. And they as they came out, and then all of a sudden it was like. The guy shot it with a gun during archery season on like a Sunday, which you can't hunt here in Sundays, and it was just a big, a big ordeal. Interesting. Yeah, it's a yeah, big, it's a that's why we hunt Ohio <laughs> on Sundays. Yeah, yeah on Sundays. <laughs> yeah, but the, you know those are the things. So, and again, even though he poached it, he then came out and said, "Yep, killed this buck legally," and then everybody's like, "It just rained." And yeah. again, because there's so many eyes on this thing. You got a lot of witnesses that come out of the woodwork. Mm-hmm. The, uh, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like the, the, the backwoods justice or just like <clears throat> the 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 wrath that the guy felt from the people oh, in the community after. Try that in a small town. Yeah, that's Dude, it, man. <laughs> he was get. I heard he was getting like organs stuffed in his mailbox and like, all, you know, obviously all kind of death threats and stuff. And like pe- people were not happy like with this. Human like, organs. No, like like <laughs> roadkill organs. Small, yeah. It's just a small yeah. intestine. Just, I fine. don't know. Just yeah. a buck nut hanging on his mailbox. It was not. His right kidney there. that they took while he was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, you want uh, this back, buddy? Yeah, no, they would have sold that one. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's a a real deal. So I figured it at least in kind of that urban area that has to be like a real thing. Frankly, that buck that I just showed you guys, like we don't know. Yeah. Didn't show up last year. Somebody killed it. We would have heard about it. Right. I th- I think it's an in the moment thing. Like if I, I, I've got to, be- I want to believe, I think that most poaching, especially of like big deer probably happens like opportunistically. Oh, for sure. They're out just, you know, whatever it is, whether mm-hmm. you're drinking or you're, you know, 
coon hunting or you're yeah. just, you know, whatever, just shooting stuff. Like, and then you're like, holy crap, there's that giant bucker. And then the temptation is yeah. there. It's right then and there. Yeah, and but like, Ohio is hard, man, because you can't headlight, you can't spotlight. Like in Pennsylvania, you can legally spotlight if you don't have a right. weapon in a vehicle outside of the gun season. Right. So like in archery season, somebody could be driving around and just be like, mm. oh, got my crossbow. Well, what they're saying with the thermals, though, you don't even need a spotlight. You just... Yeah, are like thermals? If you, if you want to be legit, scan the field. Are thermals real quick. legal in Ohio? Probably not. But for anything, I don't, for coyotes, I don't think you're allowed to coyotes. put any light on for coyotes. There for anything. sure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you and there, for, there's your can you there's your gateway for coyotes when you're hunting coyotes. I would uh, imagine. Yeah. I think so. Not, there's not very many rules on them. Yeah. Yeah. So that would be your gateway. Is like I'm out there right. coyote hunting. You know, out steps a 240 in velvet in my thermal, and it's like yeah, two. 22, 250. I wouldn't even be surprised if a lot of them get left. Like, because it's like you mm. shoot them and then you're like, panic. panic. Crap. You peel yeah. out. Maybe they try to go back. Oh, I'm sure they cut the head. At some point. It depends. I mean, how far it is and the situation. I imagine if you wanted to do it, like, legitimately, you probably could get away with it if you just didn't tell anybody. But, like, what's the fun in that? Yeah. I guess. I if you're going to take it that seriously, though, like, you might as well do it right. Right. Yeah. yeah like, That's you're, you're going to invest effort. all this time and money. Like, why not just beat the. Beat yeah. the buck at its own game, like win the chess yeah. match. Yeah, you know. Get well, it's because they're lazy. Yards. Yeah, maybe they're lazy. They probably cut corners in every aspect of life. Would be my guess. Sure. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Stealth Cam. Dude, where would we be without our cell cams? I would definitely be divorced at this point. <laughs> yeah, I hear that. I mean, the fact is, is I spent more time checking cameras than I actually did hunting prior to cell cameras. Now at least my wife can enjoy me being in the comfort of my own home, buried in my phone, checking those pictures. Yeah, 100%. And dude, when it comes to uh, trail cameras and definitely cell cameras, reliability is, I think, the number one thing that we're looking for. Stealth Cam just has a long reputation of reliable cameras, and ultimately that is the most important thing to us. They have to work. In terms of reliability, there's not a better camera on the market than Stealth Cam, whether you're talking about the Fusion X, the Reactor, or the DS4K Transmit. And most of them are under 200 bucks. SouthCam.com. Check them out. How do you guys think that uh, like hunting that urban area would change without bait in Ohio? Like where we where we hear about the most success, like urban hunting. The bait question. It's it's because you're pulling them out. You, that's basically you 95. Per, yeah. You know Georgia is that way. Ohio would be that way. Where else do we hear about success in? Tight urban areas. Tennessee, Tennessee has a Tennessee, lot of, yeah, Tennessee. around Nashville. There's mm -hmm. giant deer in every urban area in most Midwest states. Yeah, it's just now Kansas, coming up. Kansas City around the yeah. on the Kansas side of it. I've what? seen so many there, big deer in Iowa lately, and obviously there's big deer in Iowa, but mm -hmm. in the suburbs where you yeah, can't hunt in Des Moines and stuff. There's yeah. also a difference between urban hunting and suburban hunting. Like, Correct. Sure. Not very many suburban areas have more than like an acre mm -hmm. or an acre and a half. So it's like. You're not going to sneak onto an acre where a deer is going to be bedding or mm -hmm. like yeah. coming too naturally. Yeah. So, like, everyone's like, oh, you're baiting. It's like, yeah, it's not what like else do you want me to do? Yeah. It's not like, like you're going to put in a half made acre a, food plot. I think he's made a comment on, I don't know if this is your most recent video. You said something about people are giving you a bunch of crap for baiting. Oh, or something. it's hilarious. We actually used to get like fired up, and now we don't really care. Cause, yeah. But I mean, yeah. I mean, you have to do that on specific properties like right. if it's an acre and a half and you asked 30 people and only one person said yes yeah what are you gonna, are you gonna sit in the tree stand and not see a deer and waste your season or well, are you gonna bait it and, and kill and kill a deer because it's most of the stuff where you guys are hunting or, or having success it's butting up to a big piece that cannot be hunted is that we have some spots like yeah. that but like yeah uh zach's deer that he's going after it's just like <laughs> i mean how many acres is that total probably 40 yeah and it's all broken up into Two acres here, two acres here, two Just acres here. Just everybody yeah. owning little pieces, but it all making up, like, the backyards making 40 acres. I mean, I mean is it, like, a huntable habitat? If you, like, if you remove bait from the equation in that urban scenario and you're like, well, let's go find a pinch point or find an edge or find a, you know, your, your traditional, like, uh, no. If you could, if you could, if you had pro uh, permission, I'd say, on everything and there was Which no, nobody does. Yeah, if there's mm -hmm. no stipulations, yeah. you could probably do a food plot and find enough tra natural okay. travel. But, hmm. but, but then again, what's a food plot? Just an expensive bait pile? Sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. I mean, let's let's be real. Yeah, it's an attractant. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So it's and it's tough and like per permission and yeah, you're like, not going to play in a food plot on somebody who just gave you permission to sit like, on their hey, three can, acres. That's, yeah, that's the big deal too. Yeah. Well, it's it's. I mean, it makes perfect. It, you know, we're totally open about like the bath and like, dude, in that situation, like, I don't know how else you would do it. Like that's because that's why. Like, so Jeremy and I are not hunting urban areas. We're hunting more 
remote areas mm -hmm. where guys have every opportunity to improve their land and there is a lot of natural deer right. movement and that's why the small parcels you know uh if we have hard feelings it's, it's like you know the guy can go on to two acres three acres dump a corn pile and like just take advantage of all the bigger pieces right. yeah. in a situation like you're in it's like they're, they're all that way yeah like there is no big piece and to, I guess I don't even know how, what my opinion or feeling would be on that is other than I don't know how else you would do it. You well, we also haunt Columbus. Like if it if it can be split up and sold in two different parcels, it, it will be. So it's yeah. like sure. sometimes there's just no other option or you just have to, you know, pass on the buck. But unfortunately, I don't want to I mean, do that. Would be, I, I, I want to kill that buck. Yeah. You know, it would, and I want to see him. It, and so we had this conversation mainly around the disease aspect of things in Ohio of like, you know, are they going to go away from baiting and stuff? And so, you know, in let's say whatever, 90% of Ohio in this, you know, more remote areas, it would, it would definitely shift deer back to these bigger managed pieces versus the little five acre homestead essentially. Right. Yeah. But around like Columbus and Cincinnati, the, the issue would be how do you control the deer population mm -hmm. at that point then? Because if you're just out there hunting with no bait, your success rate is going to just plummet. Well, it's going to plummet because your neighbor's going to bait because he doesn't care about the rules. Yeah. Let's, I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. yeah there's, where's the enforcement at? I mean, exactly. I'm public in Ohio all the time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Really? Oh yeah. Yeah. People put mineral licks out. They put corn out, try to put dirt over it. People get caught every year. Yeah. Yeah. That doesn't surprise me. We, we had a conversation not long ago. Um, I don't know. We were talking about like hunting licenses and stuff. And then the amount of kickback we got from that of like people being like, you know, screw you. I don't need a license, more government yep. control. And it's like, what? <laughs> like, yeah. what do you mean you don't need a hunting license? And it, it was more than just like the foil wearing, you know, people don't job. understand that it's like, it's a system that we pour into and it's designed yeah. to specifically for deer management. And if that wasn't a thing, there would be no deer. They're saying people that bitch that they don't Jimmy have Joe access to go anywhere. Deer. You know? Yeah. yeah. And, and you know, those are the people, though, that doesn't matter. They don't care. They're not going to buy a license. If you tell them they can't bait, they'll still bait. Right. If you tell them they can't use a rifle in October, they'll still use a rifle in October. Like, they're just, they're never going to change. Right. Especially people that own their own land. I yeah. Mean, there's no way to, man, I mean, there's one game warden for each county. Yeah, so and I mean, if they get caught, they're still going to do it. Oh, like, it's a slap I, on the I wrist. I don't think it would be that hard. I think that for what? To, to monitor. Yeah, but it, the penalties are not severe enough. Sure. Well, like, there are no penalties. Like there was, there was a guy down no. by me in Meigs County in Southern Ohio that uh, the family shot like forty-seven bucks. Oh my gosh! And he got like a three thousand uh, well, dollar fine, and he still hunts. I'm like, talking about baiting. Oh, it would be easier to monitor. The, obviously, then yeah, not checking deer and stuff. I think if it was done correctly, I think it would be a good thing if everyone, you know, as you know, the hunters' camaraderie of hey, let's all just not do this. I believe that you would see a lot more big deer a lot Huge. of big I'll, and the people who are actually good at hunting would actually thrive a little bit more however careful i just don't <laughs> yeah i just don't see i just don't see like how that could be implemented well it's just it, i don't think it'll ever happen i mean we live in such a lazy society as it is i mean uh -huh. you see how far crossbows have come i mean they're shooting half the speed of nine millimeter i know only getting faster easy i mean i know we'll we'll, that's what our whole podcast <laughs> is about i say we'll die on that hill we bait I mean, we bait because if you don't bait, you're going to yeah. get outbaited. Oh, well, we dude, talk about it, too. We bait. Oh, yeah. I kill that deer ever bait right there. Yeah. Yep. Master baiters. Mm-hmm. The master debaters. Yeah. Well, it's because if, and it's, it's yeah, it's hypocritical. If you don't bait, your neighbor's going to bait, and then you're shit out of luck. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if if everyone could just, you know, sing a kumbaya song and just agree to yeah. agree to not do it. I believe it would be awesome. Well, all those again, three and a half just, and four and a half year olds would reach maturity. Oh, dude, it'd be. Well, well, that's well, that's well, the big thing in Ohio right well, now. I don't know if it would be awesome, like in in the urban area. Like I don't. I guess oh, it, urban. It's already out of control. Yeah. Well, I've just never considered it in that sense because, like, what Jeremy's saying about being able to kill deer efficiently would be a real problem. Like, because that's sure one of the only ways you can do it. There's just not a whole lot of huntable. Well, I guess it. So, um, not like a specific one, but um, you know, they've got metro parks That's in columbus yeah. and they've got controlled hunts but i don't think you can bait during those oh there's controlled hunts that they bring in quite literally snipers and they shoot them at night over dude cords. it's it's kind of crazy interesting it's rules for thee but not me interesting but to the public like so um the one that i hunt next to i think has like an actual public hunt like i don't know it's a draw for like december or something 
But I don't think those public land, like those public hunters can come in and dump corn legally. Yeah. I'm sure some of them do. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, so that's an urban control program using the public hunting people um, and they can't bait. So, I mean, obviously if they wanted to take off more deer, they would say, yeah, you can go dump a hundred pounds of corn and shoot whatever you want. Right. Well, there's so many ways around it. I mean, you can dump corn and pour analogics over it and sure. it's brown. It just looks like dirt. I mean, I've <laughs> yeah. seen, I've seen people film it. They do that in Pennsylvania. <laughs> I've, I've seen people film it and it looks like it, they're just browsing, browsing around, but yeah, I mean, there's definitely ways around. Well, it. I mean, that's the big thing. I mean, think about, and I, it's kind of getting better now, but for the longest time, it'd be like any YouTube show, like big name. And they're like, this buck's like eating behind a log. And it's like, yep, that's a big show is behind the log. Now. <laughs> now we know what's behind the log, yeah. right? We all know. There's now I got corn like it. stuck on their yeah. nose. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's literally like a yeah, we're desert. Coke there, yeah. that there is nothing to eat. <laughs> and that deer just so happens have like five of them behind the, the log. So like, you know, I don't know why. I mean, people made it seem like that was better to do. And it's like any idiot knows that there's a big pile of corn behind mm-hmm. that log. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like now you're starting to see it more. And I know you guys, it's like, you know, there it is. Like, sure, maybe you're not showing it glowing and radiating out there, but it's like, yeah, you know, we'll I'm using bait. That's how I'm going to have to kill these deer. We'll stand behind it. I honestly believe that there could be um, different rules for rural areas mm-hmm. and yeah. different rules. I think for so. Urban I think so areas. too. I believe that that could be super easily monitored by just the city limits and yeah. like designated areas where you're not allowed to bait and it can be, that would actually cut the amount of space that you have to monitor with like wardens and like sure. all the people who enforce those rules. It would actually cut it in half and they wouldn't have to worry about the spots that you're allowed to because mm-hmm. it's just known. But but you got to still think about how big counties like Licking and Coshocton sure. and how many deer. Are well, maybe there. it's not counties. Maybe it's, a, you know, a smaller limit. And like you can, sure. you know, everybody, all hunters, I believe, should be have should be using, you know, Spartan Forge or Onyx where you can like check and see if this is. Yeah, where right. am I out? I mean, there's so many laws that you have to be that you yeah. have to know before hunting anyways. Like, well, yeah, I mean, there's there's zones in Ohio right sure. now to where you can kill three deer in this one, exactly. four deer in this one. And I don't know. If that's, I think that is by counties, it's, yeah. it's by um, county. how they have that laid out. But I mean, it, to go around, you know, X area in Columbus or, you know, Cleveland or Cincinnati and say, hey, within this, you can bait. Mm-hmm. Like baiting's legal because that's, that's the urban method to, to kill these deer. Outside of that, no, can't do it. Yeah. You know, I mean, or, you know, it was weird when we were, we got on this whole, and th- to me, they're the same thing, but. We got on this whole feed and baiting thing because this is what Minnesota is doing now where you can feed essentially year round. You just can't hunt over it as bait. So like put the corn 50 yards that way and shoot as long it as it's like, I, think, it. I don't know if it's a distance or out of sight or whatever, but like there's some, some rule or regulation that separates it from being able to shoot it. It's like in Iowa. And like, Iowa, that's what I was saying. Iowa is the same Iowa. thing. Yeah. You, you can have feeders out on your farm all year long as long as you don't hunt over them. What is that? Like we yard, think. I think it's a yardage limit. I think that's yeah, it probably. Is. That's what it was in Mississippi. It was but like even a hundred feet. That adds some skill because you have to be able to figure out where the deer sure. are coming from. I don't right. hate that. I mean, yeah, I mean, but the thing I don't is, hate it. But if you're gonna you th- if you're gonna throw the the disease flag, then that trumps it because yeah. you can't yeah. say, well, you can't bait because of disease, right. and then oh, but you can feed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's well, like, and also applies to like our urban versus non-urban discussion. Sure. Too. Yeah, yeah, I, don't know. It, no, I think it's one of those things that uh, it's because it's going to happen. The discussion's already it's happening in Kansas now. Though we just kind of learned recently, it seems like they're backing down from the the ban. I pray every night before I go to bed that they'll ban <laughs> baiting in Ohio. Yeah, <laughs> I get down on my knees and I just Lord, Lord God. <laughs> yeah, it's coming. I don't know if it'll be not a joke two years from now <laughs> or four years from now, but they, there's no way that the states will let it happen. Now enforcement will be the the trouble. I think. Yeah. I mean, one game um, more than a county in a rural county. But that's, I mean, that's a problem. How many right? how many people do you think are like honest hunters though? Like uh, of the people when they say, "Hey, no more baiting in Ohio." How many people will actually like 50%? fifty percent? I would say forty to fifty. And okay. then the other fifty percent will be like, "Screw you, government! I'm gonna do whatever I want, anyways." Or they just wouldn't even know because they don't even follow the rules, anyways. <laughs> that's like, a very good point. They just wouldn't even. They, they don't even. Know. They would have no idea. I know people who 
my so my I think home, they would know. You know my my this is a big deal. My home state of Pickaway County or my home county of, <laughs> of Pickaway County. Home that, state that that got changed to a one deer county, like two years ago or something like that. And like some people of my, have no idea. Some of my buddies from high school just had no idea. Yeah, it's like mm. we it, see the same. They're thing not getting here. a notification on their phone, and unless they look up rule changes, yeah, which they're, they're not. not. Know. Like we had, um, we have a muzzle litter season after Christmas that you can only use like the old school flintlock muzzle litter. So, okay. and but like Dick Sporting Goods and stuff would all sell inline muzzle litters, right. and people would buy them and go hunting with them. And it's like you know that's not legal, and they're like, "What do you mean? I just bought it I just here. Bought it, yeah." Same with like Rural King corn. selling corn. They sell corn. In Pennsylvania. Yeah, they sell corn all year long right here. And it's like, it literally, it's like deer corn. It's like, <laughs> literally says deer corn. You well, can't we, do it. We were in Illinois where you can't bait or feed ever. And there's a big pile of deer corn. Big pile of deer corn. Hey, if I was a game warden, I'd sit right next to the pile yeah. and just take Whole notes. Box full of minerals yeah. and everything. Just taking yeah. it home to my chickens. Yeah. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. I mean, but that's. It's a big in, chicken. Where it comes from is the manufacturing side. I mean, that's the that's what's given the push now in Kansas to say, hey, listen, you're not going to ban baiting. Mm. It's the manufacturer side. And so those manufacturers don't care that they're selling corn to rural king in Pennsylvania and where people aren't allowed to use it. They just made money. Yeah, and but people will like buy a money it. thing to me. People will buy it. And they'll use it because they don't. They don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't know or they, they don't, don't care. care. I, I do think it's it's probably 40 to 50%. But honestly, that would I think that 40 or 50% would make a huge it still would be, make it a difference. Uh, it would change difference. the... Yeah, well, honestly, that 40 to 50% are the, probably the diehard hunters. Mm -hmm. The other 40 to 50% are just... It would make a difference they for can the do. wrong people. Well, honestly, it wouldn't be that hard to... I mean... <clears throat> Dude, drones are pretty effective for stuff like that. You know, I mean, so for everybody that decides I'm not going to bait, like throw a drone up real quick and you'll see real quick in your neighborhood who, who like, is baiting. You know, mm -hmm. call me a narc or whatever, but I absolutely would do that. Like yeah. if they ban baiting and I was suspicious, you know, throw a drone up. Throw a drone up, you know it. Yeah. Hmm. That's actually smart. I didn't think about that. Except they're banning uh, drones in Ohio too. For what? I don't know. What did, uh, Period? What did, Yoda, think, what did Yoder tell us? I don't think you're allowed for? to use them. Well, for deer hunting. To aid you in a hunt. Yeah. Yeah. But then that's so vague on what's... Yeah, so what when, you, when you put it up to look for corn piles, are you also scouting? No. Yes, I would. <laughs> well, yeah, I guess. I mean... I mean, that's the gray area that you end up falling into. They'd have into. to argue intention, but like... Rules. What am I going to yeah. do by seeing a deer with a drone? Stalk it on somebody else's property? Mm -hmm. Over their corn pile? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might be the strap. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Who broke who broke more rules in that yeah. that mindset? Yeah, it's a it's a sticky situation. I do think that the urban stuff should have its own policy. I don't think I that agree. I don't think that you're gonna be able to kill deer efficiently enough without corn piles. I don't yeah, I don't feel nearly as strongly about, you know, wanting to get rid of baiting in Ohio in the urban areas I do like in the area that I hunt. Because I think it's that's you guys kinda almost need it. They're like the the way how small the tracts of land are mm -hmm. and how little access to habitat you guys have to hunt natural movement. Nothing about the city is normal, right? For no. for yeah. deer. So I mean, it would be cool if they had like a program where you could apply and it's like you can't hunt in these ur like you can hunt in these urban areas. Yeah, a special tag. Exactly, but then you don't bait, but you have so much more yeah, more area and area you have to access. move because then you can mm. hunt like you, actually you can hunt, find yeah. you know you would yeah. be. But then again, like. Some guy who owns an acre and a half would be like, I do not want this guy on my property. There's always sure. going to be those guys. And honestly, that's... I'll say that's, incentivize. They pay them. Yeah, they pay them for access. Just like the they do out, so they, out where you guys are going in South Dakota and stuff. The plots program or something. Yeah. I don't... For, I mean, the problem is, is in Columbus, like a thousand bucks doesn't mean shit to most of those people. They're like, yeah, my house is worth three million. Yeah. Like a thousand dollars to let people onto my property. I don't think so. Try 10 or 15 grand. It's... The idea is so good. But the details, I feel like there's just so many they different have to ways. Be perfect. Yeah, they have to be perfect and everyone has to agree. And unfortunately, this is America. Yeah. And not everybody happened. agrees on everything. And that's just tough. Well, you know, most people don't care about deer hunting either. It's what it really what it is. Like if you, yeah. you go and approach somebody you know, with a plan and even a budget, they're like, What what? Like deer? Eh. Or mm -hmm. no, or just the effort to think about it is like just kinda and and obviously no offense to you guys. The other kind of offense taken. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the other crazy thing is like if you think about the way that you guys hunt in an urban area is like you're not over the top successful either no it's not like it's a hundred percent guarantee like hey he got access to this and he's got a corn pile he's gonna kill that buck yeah it could be i feel like there's a misconception with how easy it is because it's really not 
Like, well, that just isn't. And no offense to like Lee and those guys, but that's the seek one push. Is like every time Lee knocks on a door and he gets into a place, he kills a giant buck. And so yeah. that's what people have that's now what you processed. See, but then he's you know later one. they come out with videos that are like you didn't see that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yep. I think they're releasing something like that of like a door knocking campaign that they're doing. And just to show how unsuccessful yeah. it is, because people have this idea and then they go knock on five doors and get no's and they're like, Do well, you yeah. are you guys running into people that have like more and more people are knocking and they're just oh, yeah. like annoyed by this shit? People a couple times a, we've had people get annoyed. Somebody's already asked. People are already hunting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, because just like a public land thing, like, I mean, that's basically what you guys are doing is just asking, it's public land permission, um, essentially, and that, you know, there's a high demand for it, obviously. Yeah. Who, whoever's willing to do it. I, I personally think it's it's pretty cool. Like, that's, I think that's one of the things that's like so dynamic about deer hunting is like urban deer hunting is almost all about getting access. Right. Like, like getting permission, knocking on doors. Like, that's way more important than maybe like, the ability to read terrain or like, sure. you know, somebody that hunts public land exclusively in Michigan or it's like hunts the swamps and stuff. Oh, mm -hmm. It's all about getting away from people. And it's this type of habitat and this and that. It's like in urban areas, it's all about knocking on doors, like charisma, pe people skills, you know, doing this. And then, you know, especially where baiting is allowed, it's just about getting that access. Yeah. Um, That's almost 90% of the battle. I think for urban hunting, especially the permission and just like your spiel and like how you get permission is actually extremely important because it could be the difference between getting a hundred no's and getting like 99 no's and one yes mm -hmm. right or now 25 right now our rates are like maybe like one in 10 damn on average you guys have a yes. feel, you don't have to share it but you guys feel like you have a good system a good pitch yeah. it's evolving it's constantly changing but yeah i feel like we start i'm just i'm a thinker i'm a we said this before in like one of our videos i worry a lot so like not like anxious or anything <laughs> but like i just think of all the possible tweaking outcomes. out a little bit yeah, yeah. Tweaking, I, I think about all the possible outcomes and i'm a very system i have a very systematic approach and i shared that with you and you have a very systematic approach and you shared that with me and i think it can't be very systematic because then you just sound salesy yeah like you're just giving a pitch and like Everybody hates a solicitor, right? Like, yeah. Nobody wants to answer the door to somebody who's trying to sell something. But no, I mean, think about how common it is for somebody to, a stranger to be at your door anymore. Yeah. And not selling anything or delivering Yeah, it's just really weird. Yeah, unless it's like an Amazon pack. It's just super right. weird that somebody's like at my door knocking, wanting something yeah. anymore. And I guess that's kind of, you kind of have to paint a picture that you don't want anything and you're helping the community out. And, sure. you know, there's a there's a back and forth that needs to be there that I struggle with. And he's really good at, he's very good at having a conversation, getting them invested in what's happening. And I'm very much so like, I don't want to take up all of your time. And like, I just want to quit, you know, mm -hmm. I've Number learned to kind confidence. of confidence. If yeah. you want confidence, you're not going to be there. How about your appearance? Like, do you have, do you guys change your appearance when well, you I go? cover my tattoos? Yeah. I put gel in my hair. Uh, no, I don't. But I think you just have to appear like put it up in a net. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, straight I man think, bun. Yeah, I think at the end of the day, <laughs> they just want to know you're a good person. Yeah, you know, like just in general, like if you answer the door and somebody's like threatening or you know they yeah. seem aggressive or you're unsure of their intentions, you have to you have to make them aware of that immediately. Like, hey, well, just as a not here to sell anything, not here to bother you. That doesn't mean right. they're gonna let you hum, but that's that's gonna get you, you at least have a foot in the door. And that's gonna, gonna give you a conversation. To talk to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do a lot of those end like at the door or is it, hey, come inside and talk to me or I'll let me think about it? Most, that's probably like an 80, 10, 10 split. 80 ends at the door, 10s you get in and then 10 is, sure, I'll, I'll okay. call you later and yeah. you can write that one off. Yeah. Do you guys go together or always separate? Well, we used to go together, but that's way more threatening, I think. I was going to say two, two, yeah. two, two very big, masculine, beefy, yeah. masculine two guys walking bullets. up. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, but is this we, the police? <laughs> that, that that was, was a, actually a, a big stepping stone for us because you you did a lot worse, I think, because it's it's less comforting having somebody else there. Yeah, yeah, because you just are like, okay, am I talking? Are you talking? And yeah, like, it just seemed like we were unsure of how it was going to happen. Also, like whenever the, you know they would ask us a question, we'd look at each other like, I'll take this one. Yeah, it, it's got to be like a. It, we just found out that it was just better because for one it was less threatening and once we started doing that we actually started getting a little bit more success because you probably just were having a discussion at that right point. yeah it's just a conversation yeah, yeah that's that's step one is just to create conversation about life about yeah. take it off the deer take talk two or three minutes with some people just like being how about this weather about. huh yeah <laughs> no I've, I've talked about it before i mean if you walk up and you see an ohio state flag or mm -hmm. 
you see they have uh, stuff on their trees protecting them from the deer rubbing them. I mean, that's always a good house to knock on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, yeah. Number one is confidence, but two is... Scouting like, the house before you get in. Oh, dude. dude, Facebook profiles, not, <laughs> not even joking. Nice. If, oh, yeah. if it's a make or break property, we'll just take like a day and we'll not stalk them, but we'll kind of oh, we'll creep on their Facebook. No, we'll stalk them. Yeah, okay, so we'll stalk them, right? You're just sitting in their work yeah. parking lot. You're like, <laughs> we, just, uh-huh. we just got our binos uh-huh. out. Yeah. Do you, think just, that, do you think that helps or is it... Is I don't it, know. It makes me feel better it, when I go up to the door. Because I'm kind of like you, like I'll... I'm, like I'll see every scenario like that, and and, and I'm not not a worrier, but like an anxious person too. I am too. And yeah. I have to like sometimes intentionally just not. I'm like I could access that information and like get some preconceived notions, but I'm better if I don't. I know your kids I, are five, three, and two years old. Yeah. If I if I just <laughs> you go, voted for if yeah. I if I just what? go in with a confidence in my ability to like mm-hmm. generate conversation and, and like be you know human with somebody then that seems to pan out way better. Yeah. I may like look stupid or I might ask stupid questions, but that's more, I think, relatable than I'm like, oh, I'm trying to, uh, this and that. I saw you did this or. Yeah. Or like, How'd you know that? I'm like, <laughs> yeah. have a good day. That's pretty interesting. Bronco, <laughs> you got in the garage. Tell your daughter door shut and they're like, what? <laughs> tell, tell your daughter, good luck at her soccer game this weekend. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. Um, She'll no. know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just an interesting approach. I definitely, I take like a more salesy approach. I think not salesy, but like I have a spiel and I like rehearse it in the shower before, and I'm like uh-huh. all all worked up in the car, and then oh, I'm like, dude. and then it's I knock like on the, the door. It's like the Tommy boy scene. Yeah, oh. that's funny. Do you ever drive past? And then like, <laughs> oh yeah, just like <laughs> so cool. like, hey, I saw you drive by like six times. Oh, I'm God, not dude. answering the door. <laughs> that dude. <laughs> Dude, well, dude, that's, that's he's like, all right, I'm gonna pull it. No, no, not yet. Yeah. I'm ready. If I surprise myself with like, because I'm not doing as much like door knocking, but I I used to. I used to get. I used to hunt only permission, and the best time was if if I just like I happen to be, and I'm like, I'm I'm gonna do it right now. Yeah. And I would just go. I saw they were home. Spur of the moment. Spur yep. of the moment. I Pulled didn't have time to worry about it. Just do it. Yeah. After I knock on the first door, regardless oh, they of, get way of what they say, I'm like. I can do yeah. this. And then it's like, but I do knock on the door with a spiel in, in my head. And then yeah. as soon as they're like, hello, I'm like, oh, uh, I forget it all. And then I just, yeah, I just it. talk. Yeah. yeah. I just wing it. That's the best though, is if you, you got to be able to uh, control the conversation and also be able to bounce back. Cause you have no idea what they're going to say, yeah. how they're going to feel you're like, no, I hate, I love the deer. And you're like, well, how do I turn this into permission? Right. You know, you know without one, making one it thing, seem like I'm here just to kill everyone. Sure. Well. <laughs> you know, one yeah. thing that's worked really well for me and I can, you know anybody can use this because it just seems like p- people want to just like not be in they want to know why you're there mm-hmm. yeah. for one of the very first things that i'll say is hey you know for people don't want to open the doors usually so they're like behind their screen door or whatever and they're like creeping i'm like I'm like hey, hey how's it going i'm, I'm jared I, i'm actually your neighbor from and it doesn't even matter if i'm a couple miles away or like i'll do the same thing in ohio it doesn't matter if i'm their neighbor or your my parents are your neighbor mm-hmm. yeah and they're like oh okay like you're so, from so and so oh i know where that's at okay yeah. And you're now welcome. they have some like framework of mind and like that's that's usually like puts them at mm-hmm. ease in the beginning. So that's the first thing I always say. Regardless, I I nail this part of my spiel and then the rest is crap. I'm like, hey, my name's Zach. I'm not here to sell anything, I'm not here to bother you. I just have a quick question for the property owner if now's a good time. You know, and if I am if I'm local to the area or like Yeah. Yeah, because that would be tough for us. It'd be like, yeah, I'm Jeremy from Pittsburgh and they're like, What the fuck are you doing? Yeah, here? Right, right. <laughs> okay, Jared. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, um, I'm yeah. a Penn State guy. They're like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh gosh. Yeah, even worse. Not yeah. in, Ohio, not in <laughs> Ohio. Doesn't go over well yeah. in Ohio State territory. No. I just had this bag of corn. I wanted to see if I could. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You mind if I put this trail camera up in this bag of corn in your backyard? <laughs> I bought it in PA, but I can't use it. <laughs> yeah. I hate to return it. <laughs> I remember that was Weston that told us. He's like, my success rate is like zero per zero percent or he's like doing br- i realized really, why that really <laughs> tough time and i was like that's yeah. pretty bad dude you should probably work yeah. on your spiel well, i think hey, can i on i think it would be okay. the efficiency you side. Any calls here? like when we did the farmer stuff <laughs> or like when we did in kansas like uh what was the dakotas too like we almost just had long we were sitting there for two hours talking to the farmer and eventually he's like yeah i got other people hunting it <laughs> you know mm, but yeah. you just you were you just really dive into those conversations just over the phone yep i just call i just call people up I spent a lot of time before our North Dakota. Do you take care of them people. too? Like we would, uh, we like we bought the one guy a bottle mm-hmm. of bourbon. The one lady, uh, she that had guy a, let us hunt his place and stay on his place. Yeah, his guy, yeah. He said you can plug your camper in here. And, the one lady had a big cattle wow. farm, and we ended up like Buying filling our entire farmer. cooler of beef before we left, mainly just because she was like in a jam, and we're like, yeah, she we'll take it. it. Yeah, 
Yeah. She found out later on where there's three <laughs> cows slaughtered. <laughs> She's like, what happened? Told my wife, hey, three missing, came home per- with three missing persons. Like, yeah. <laughs> if it's but a really good piece, we will. We'll take like, care of them. Yeah. Send them like a, a Christmas gift. Yeah. Or like a, we, we Thank gave, you. we gave somebody like a Thanksgiving pie because we just had extras. So Very nice. Like, I'll take them. Sure. Yeah. Just hand them out to permission pieces. But yeah. 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 It's, it's interesting because I, I think, um, probably anymore there's just as many people ruining the knocking potential as you guys may be doing it well yep. like there's other people that are just terrible at it and like if you end up following behind them there that person's like already halfway down yeah. the tubes yeah. mm-hmm. as soon as you knock on the door they're like hey listen i just talked to somebody i told him no and you're like <laughs> what did he say <laughs> yeah it's tough because everyone has like a secret sauce like everybody's so scared to talk about like how they get permission because it's like they feel like once everybody knows and it's it game, sure. then it can't it's be game rocket over. science like well i think it's so personal in terms Just of make how you relate mm-hmm. that's Seven. harder for most people than you think oh i don't doubt that yeah. especially in this day and age. F- but it's not it's not complex like because no. there's a fine line there's either you're an introvert and in which you're really uncomfortable in it or you're almost and you're i'm an introvert no, I can not. Say, yeah, I definitely am. No. The definition of an introvert is people <laughs> exhaust me. I, I'm I'm not like at the end of lots of... Con- they don't fill you up, but you're drained at the end. I'm drained at the yeah. end. He knows the definition. But He's you're also... An you're also well, I had to uh, look into it because I'm very personable. Like I can have... Well, that's what I was saying. You're very fine between confidence and cocky. Like sure. you walk a fine line there. Sure. I think on the good side. Thank you. But it's a fine line because I could see how people would think that you would come off um, almost there because you're so confident sure. about yourself sure. and stuff in those conversations. I mean, but I'm not really that confident about myself. But he just can't do it for a long time, right? Because then you uh, get trained. Right, right, right. Yeah, right. then you drain out. Well, that's why, and I see it on myself like at trade shows. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm like, I'm on for a bit. And, and then, then after just, a while, I'm like, i done. Yeah, I don't Screw have everybody. Yeah, I'm out. I don't, don't want to do I'm this out. anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's. Which be, just doesn't affect my door knocking. I mean, I. That's you're that's on, an easy interaction. You're on a mission. Yeah. Yeah. It's because I mean you could tell it's like there, there's people in the industry that are like if, whether they're asking for urban permission or just like knocking door and I'm like oh man there's no way that guy's rates good because he's an arrogant son of a bitch <laughs> like there's just no unless he's like an amazing salesman like mm-hmm. you just you can tell like people would be turned off by it. Yeah. I think at the end of the day they just want to know you're a good person. If you're humble, I bet you get you in. Shoot animals on their property like. Yeah, you're bringing a, a weapon onto their property in, in their city. backyard where the kids are in there on the swings and stuff. Those people didn't grow up around, like like me. I didn't grow up in the city, but I just didn't grow up around the hunting culture. Like you have to explain to them. I'm a bow hunter. I bet that's an advantage to you guys that maybe you don't even realize is that your relation to a lot of your life not being a hunter to those people kind of probably comes off really well to somebody like us who. Like this, is all we know. It's like we just think it's like super easy for them to understand, like why we would come in there and shoot these deer. It exposes possible concerns that somebody who maybe grew up around the hunting culture just wouldn't. Yeah, we're oblivious to. Yeah, Hmm. that's that's interesting. I never thought about that. I bet it's. I bet it comes out even in a conversation to say like, hey, you know, I didn't even. I grew up around here, and I didn't even hunt till I was in high school or college or whatever. And like immediately, you're probably more relatable to the person who's just hunted their whole life who wouldn't even say that because. They've hunted their whole life. Right. Yeah. Maybe they just found you another percent. Dude, absolutely. <laughs> we'll take I'm, all of I'm taking notes. Here. <laughs> There's probably all kind of ways to, I mean, it's just like anytime you ask for something, if you come right out and ask for it, like a lot of times it's just easier to say no or it's like, eh, but it, you know, more secret sauce, I guess you probably, there's ways to get in the door. Like whether it's, uh, you know, we talked with Bomar about the, he mm-hmm. a lot of some Columbia stuff and, you know, yeah. urban stuff about, um, you know, Hey, can I, you know, whatever his step was. Hey, uh, can, I, can I shed hunt? Can I turkey hunt? Can yeah, I, can yeah. I put a camera up? Things that are, that are less, camera. like, invasive or less, hey, can Absolutely. I just do this? Even can I do some work for you, you know, if that's, you know, yeah. add some value or something like that. But Yeah, and that was the the gateway. Shed hunting is a great one because most people are like, you know, if they're not that serious about it, they're like, sure. Or yeah. if they're not hunters or whatever, yeah, I'm fine. The like, camera thing, fine. I could see freaking people out from a privacy standpoint. Yeah. Yeah, there's you have to little, explain what it is. I'm yeah. gonna angle it away from your house. Yeah, I'm, not I'm just gonna be monitoring your yeah. property day and night. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a weird. Uh-huh. I mean, that's. I mean, for some city folk, that might be weird. I mean, I mean that's why they're. Me. That's why they've banned it on a lot of the public. Like in Kansas public, it's because of privacy. And it's like, mm-hmm. dude, there's some barren areas of maybe, Kansas maybe public. Maybe for good reason too. There's some barren areas of my farm, and I'll show you a picture later that 
yeah. justifies that law. Serial oh, shitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got a serial shitter on camera. I don't know. Farmers take a big old dump right in front of my camera. Yeah. What a beautiful spot. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. oh, right here's a, a good right spot. A it's scrape. cleared out. There's a, there's a nice it's little a big, scrape right here yeah. where I could just take a dump. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure he held on to my licking branch and leave. <laughs> <laughs> That's I mean, crazy. when you're in the combine and the hot snakes hit, you just you just get out. <laughs> right. You got to roll. He had overalls, too. I the mean, corn that's, cops were coming. <laughs> yeah. Dude lives out there. You better yeah. watch out. You better take a shotgun. Yeah. I don't even know his name. I do see him where I just call him the serial shitter. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on the phone with Jeremy. Like, hey, I got, hold on real quick. I got to talk. Serial shitter's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how you doing? How you doing, man? Never uh, saw your ass before. Yeah, like, <laughs> I've seen your butthole. <laughs> uh, that's all I can see when I look at him. Isn't yeah. he, is he Amish? No. Print it out oh. and put it in his mailbox. Yeah. That'd be yeah. hilarious. You'd be like, who, what? Mail what? It who him. did this? <laughs> I did this. The question is, did he see the camera or not? I don't think so. If he didn't, that's if he did, that's more funny, actually. Oh, that's gangster if he did. He definitely didn't see it. <laughs> he definitely looked all around though. <laughs> I've got a full how, sequence of how, pictures. I was on like this area. I wish you would have had it on video. It's pretty Like open of all area. the places, is it weird that he picked that spot or is it like, okay, I guess if I were to take no, a crap and I didn't know there was a camera. Kind of weird. Probably. It was I mean it was just on a well, field. I mean, edge. I, I kinda <laughs> Is that last year? I kind of, I kind of question it for the fact that last year, Jeremy, he didn't pick a tree to lean up against. You're, yeah. you're more, you're <laughs> more a of a, a hold on into the creek. Oh, big fan Speaking of Speaking of creek kings, oh, yeah. Yeah. He's more yeah. of a, I've dropped a lot of hot loads at a creek. He's more of a hold on and have just the gravity angle it down. That's nowhere near your feet when it There's hits. There's nothing. You feel so vulnerable when you're just like. I am naked from the waist down, mm. and I am just pooping right now. Yeah. It's just the most vulnerable feeling, and the fact that you caught somebody like that on camera is going to make me look twice next time. Was that last for year, sure. Jeremy? I mean, uh, yeah. You I mean, I, yeah. It was should always year. look twice. I mean, I, I feel like we see, all. I, I, I feel like I, I probably look twice in my own bathroom. I'm just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that's mainly so there's not a kid like around the corner. I just think that's scarf for life. Dude. Like he just picked a. It's it's like a dog. You know, they they like run around in a circle for like yeah. Five yeah. minutes, and they're like, "This is a good this spot." This is the spot. It's like, dude, our yard's like uh, a third of I, an acre. I had to. I got to believe that he had the rumbles in the combine, and I mean, he barely got out of there. Two of them. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that is wild. Oh my god, dude, you have to show him. That is so fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, th- that has yeah, to be like praying at that moment. That's in, time. in the center of the frame right. too. Like <laughs> that has to be like I couldn't make it any further, right? Because it's just an awkward place to do <laughs> that it. That or he hates you. I mean, he's not even ninety degrees with his knees there. I mean, it's just straight projectile. I think he's I just mean, comfortable in the woods, man. He's just. I don't he's know, a woodsman. man. He's, he's a, woodsman. a woodsman for sure. Yeah. What, uh, what is he wiping? Here's with? my licking brand. My big old poison brand. ivy. <laughs> hey, the deer are curious creatures. They, the, you yeah, probably he had probably a, had a bu- he probably had a buck in there like an hour what later. The they did. They kept using that scrape. Mm. I don't know. I <laughs> mean, nice it, they're like, feels <laughs> <laughs> so, the soil is just bushy. mix this up for for a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. I Yuck. feel like if he's experienced <laughs> in the woods, that's that's an odd choice of yeah. of place. Interesting. And we. We, we haven't had anything crazy like that on our cameras, but our friend... I was going to ask you, because, I mean, you're in, like, urban areas. There's people all over the oh, place. Oh, yeah, we have pictures of people. We have, like, walkers, just walkers. Yeah. Like, I got freaking walk in bed. Yeah. I've got meth heads on mine every once in a while <laughs> yeah. in southern Ohio. Mm. Our friend Kyle had a picture. It was actually a video. A guy of a, a chicken suit. A guy of a chicken suit just going... Bawk, bawk, bawk. <laughs> it, it's, the, it's the most outrageous thing. Like, obviously, he probably knew the camera was there, but it was just, like... Who's doing this? Wow. I gotta see if I can find it. And it wasn't even a suburban area. I'm pretty sure it was like kind of a rural area. <laughs> so like my dude was rocking a chicken suit for Damn. a while. For a while. Yeah. Wow. And that's odd. You don't think that's one of your buddies? I don't know. Yeah. It, I mean, I'm sure he probably got pranked or it was I think he said it was Because he definitely knows treat. it's there. Yeah. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> if not, that's even wow. more terrifying. It's drugs. Creepy if he doesn't Stay actually. away from yeah. drugs, kid. I wonder, like, you know. We all spend a lot of time in the woods. I wonder how many times we get caught on cameras and we just don't know we're there. I thought about that. They're hard to sp- as, as hard as you. Uh-huh. As all, uh, you know, I'm always looking, but every once in a while, I'm like, oh, it got me. We got a couple when we were scouting in Kansas on some lease ground. There's other people that have permission to be on it, and we'd be walking through, like, oh, this is a banging spot. Nope. Right yeah. there, son of a bitch. They're always kind of where you think they would be. Yeah, which is, that's encouraging to me because I'm like, oh, that's a good spot. Your Guy spot. knows what he's doing. Yeah. Yeah, and then we make sure that we get seen just so that they're like, 
so they know somebody else is in there. Right. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it would scare them off. Yeah. I feel like most of the, pe- the most of the permission pieces we get nobody hunts like no. if we knock on a door and yeah. they're like i got you know jim bob hunt, hunting in my five friends like unless it's just a beautiful piece of property like we're and probably big. just gonna be like all right well thanks but no thanks yeah because like yeah there's not enough we reject them. them yeah it's a plot <laughs> twist they're not yeah. Yeah. they're one. like wait no please <laughs> please hunt here yeah it's reverse psychology yeah yeah um, we only have like one one piece one piece that has like a multiple other hunters but it's a great um, piece it's a great it's a great piece so we just had to do it and it's worked. Yeah. Hmm. Stay, we st- stay on the other side. That's actually where they're all <laughs> where they all are. Do you guys get trespassers on the permission pieces that you have? Hunters or just people? Hunters. Uh, I don't know if we've ever caught a hunter on one of our cameras. Just trying to sneak in. Mm-mm. Contrary to popular belief, like we don't have a ton of properties. Sure. I mean, how how many proper how many permission like fifteen maybe? Yeah. But they're like decent properties. Like we don't. Are you guys hunting a lot of the same deer, or are you sp- you spreading out to try to find different deer? Depends on the year, but a lot of it's splitting off. Yeah, which I think would be the advantage, right? Because like, mm-hmm. if it's one deer and that deer gets killed and 10 of your properties around it, you're screwed. Yeah. yeah, it's also hard to maintain. Like, one of the biggest expenses is just camera batteries. Yeah, Dude, it tell is me wild. About it. How many... <laughs> Like if we could Some get a sponsor like by like three, Energizer, that would be our best. What are they like two fifty or three bucks per battery this year on a double yeah. A lithium? Last year I was talking about it. We bought five hundred for five hundred bucks last year. Yep, I did too. And this year we bought. They doubled in price. They're yeah, two. Yeah. They were. You found those them. Sam's ones that weren't too bad. Yeah, Sam's those Club. eighteen packs. Sam's Cubs better. Yeah, yep, that's where we were getting. We used two. What's what's the the packs? Oh, the Dakota Lithiums? Dakota Lithiums. Yeah, I'm getting the 10 amp Dakota Lithium packs and yep. wiring them straight in, and it's good for the season. Those are sweet. And they're, and they're rechargeable. They're more expensive up front. Yeah, like 35 bucks per. Is that it? I think so. Yeah. And you could put it in like a little... Uh, it's a little uh, ammo case. The best thing that I found... Oh, ammo box. Yeah, with yeah. the ammo case from... Uh, who makes it? Plano? That? Yeah, like a little Plano yeah. case. Just keeps it you know, yep. dry and Throws stuff. the wire in, plugs right in the bottom, and I don't touch it all season. What yeah. kind of cameras do you guys run? Stealth. And muddy. Okay. Yeah. I got you. We're uh we're Tacticam guys. Yeah, it's gonna be the same. I had a bunch I of they the, have a thing in the bottom. I used so. to have some of the Tacticams with the solar panel. I don't know if those were SKs. The SKs, or, yeah. Yeah, and then they had the rechargeable but uh, like if it wasn't in direct sunlight, it didn't. It's uh, it's such a small panel. Yeah, it sucks it. it. Has to be like a field edge or just like a perfect spot. Well, right? and if you're putting it on bait, you're screwed because you're just gonna get picture, picture, picture. Yeah. That'd be a yeah. good option for you. Though. I'm st- I'm like starting to filter them in. It's like not every scenario makes sense. Mm-hmm. I don't want like if it's in the middle of a field, like on a post. Yeah, I don't, I don't like just that. want a big box set in there. <laughs> but if it's like, if it's a place that I want to set and and not ever have to go back to, like right. buried restaurant. Yeah, they're or really nice. If you got a little bit weak signal, I mean, it makes all the difference because that thing is pulling a lot of charge out of there. Those lithiums. And you don't need double A's in them to run them. Nope. Just just you can just you, run them straight. Just up. run them yeah. straight in the battery. That's sweet. Just yeah, straight juice. We're going to have to look into that for some of our further properties. Yeah, yeah, they're nice. Yeah, and then at the end of the season, I gather them all up. I take, like, whatever, half a day and recharge them all, stack them on the shelf, and they're ready to go. Yeah, once you figure, it's kind of like messing with electronics. It's kind of like, mm, what am I doing here? But once you figure out, like, you know, the charge, here's how you hook it up, and it'll show you if it's charged or not. Yeah. And then it's, then you've kind of figured out. And yeah. there's a way to, uh, I worry about, uh, you know, critters pulling the plug out of it. So I plug it in and, and wrap it around the camera once, and then I spiral down a tree. So it's like anything. There's a there's process yeah. and a method to. Mm-hmm. But once they're running, they you know they run. Yeah, they're good. They run. Yeah, we have a couple issues with some critters. We actually have one actually really funny picture that looks very bad, but it's like <laughs> oh, we yeah. don't really know what it is. Your tongue is what it looks like, but <laughs> up close. <laughs> <laughs> like what, what's what's that look like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I had a one time. I had a bunch of cameras stolen, or so I thought, and uh, <clears throat> it was like it was years and years ago. I was maybe five, I don't know, five or eight years ago. Um, and I was running all cameras like over corn piles and it was like, it was early in the season. It was just like, I don't know. I was trying to do inventory or something like mm-hmm. that. And, uh, so I'd go out with corn and then I would put the camera over it and they, none of them were cell cams at that point. So it tells you, yeah, it was a while ago. They were all just regular cameras. I don't, I don't remember what brand or anything like that. Uh, but I would dump the corn and then I would put the camera up and then I, you know, and then I left. Um, and I went back like two, three weeks later to, to check them. I was going to pull cards and it was like the first one I went to. I was like the the camera was gone, and I, and it's, it's a private property. It's my family's property. It's like no nobody should be there. Like the, I 
you know, I've never had a problem with anything getting stolen or anything like that. So, um, camera was gone. And it, the only thing was it was fairly close to the line. It was like 30 yards from, uh, the property line. And there's like, uh, Amish guys on the property right across there. Right. And I noticed that the, it had been mowed and I'm like, like no, nobody else would be back here other than this, this thing has been mowed. So, so right. I, so I text, text her, call my dad. And I'm like, Hey, you know, I don't know. I'm not, not accusing anybody, but this camera's gone. Like I don't. Nobody should be back here. I, I did notice that it was mowed. So he's like, so he called the guy and he's like, well, and my son mowed that while he was out there. And I was like, okay, well, don't. Did your son <laughs> see a camera? Well, it was on his property. Okay. And, and it, it was an Amish guy? It was the, yeah, Amish guy's kid Better is, is who mowed it. How did he check the camera? How did he mow the grass? Oh, yeah, they got ways. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Don't worry about that. They, they, Pl- those guys like are running all kind of cameras. Tree. We'll talk about that next. <laughs> yeah, but either yeah. way, I was like, well, I don't know. Maybe he saw it or some, something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, so I, ke- I keep going on. Like, next camera was was there. was fine. And then um, I, I went to a totally different property. Like, I was a couple miles away. Same thing. Camera was gone. I was like, what the heck? I was like, there's absolutely no way. Like, if, if that guy stole his camera. <laughs> I was like, there's nobody supposed to be here either. It's a totally different property. Um, I think it was on the third camera. So there's one more that I found missing that I found it like not far from the tree. It was like, it was laid up or it was like pushed under a, a, a tree or something. I was like, what the heck? So I pu- I pulled the card and checked it. And sure enough, picture like 423 or whatever is raccoon pulling it off the, the tree. What? And I, I went back and found every single camera. They'd been pulled off. And you know, the furthest one was maybe like 20, 30 yards from there like buried up under it was because i was like touching the corn you know the dust was getting all over the thing and then they think uh, it's like some kind of a feeder mechanism or this is a valuable piece of alien technology. i will bury this freaking crazy i've never had it happen again which was super weird but three times in the same year same same card pool like right like that you know and initially i'm thinking i'm <laughs> they're evolving my cameras. bro probably, they're probably, evolving. probably bigfoot it would be my guess yeah, yeah. or, or like raccoons are stealing my stealing my cameras huh actually, we actually saw a chupacabra on the way here oh yeah yeah, yeah. big one well it was actually funny we were driving sure. i was like dude those are giant dogs and it was like a white dog and a black dog but they were like like two three hundred pound dogs and i was like wait a second i was we like oh, bears in pennsylvania. those are just what we have bears in pennsylvania dude we have bears in columbus do you? Dude, we just had a bear in Columbus not too long ago. It freaking destroyed your dad's like bird feeder thing. Yeah, Whoa. City bears. We don't have any bears where I'm at in Ohio. Yeah. Because they want corn. And I'm east of you. You guys, you drove through, like I'm from like East Liverpool-ish mm-hmm. area. I mean, there's just none. I mean, not that I know of. They shouldn't be in Columbus. No. It was the first sighting since like 2004. There was like yeah. a confirmed sighting. Somebody got in like a ring doorbell. Damn. Like a mile away from my house. And so then the bird feeder. Somebody was- probably released it as a pet. Yeah, <laughs> right. It was just a, actually a dog that they bought, and it was not a dog when they <laughs> be free. When it grew up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was interesting. Your dad was like, it was like this big, like, those little metal things that you stab in the ground, and it yeah. like kind of bends over, and you like he like put the bird feeder there. And it was just completely bent over, and he was like, "Not like what bent would over. Happened? The actual metal was like the metal bent, was bent. Like yeah, holy bridge. cow! I was and like, we got some. He's big just old sitting there hanging on it. It was a big old raccoon. It's like eight yards from my dad's bedroom window. too. We joked about it being a bear, and then literally like the next day, sure your enough. dad was like, "Bro, there's actually a bear around here." <laughs> <laughs> so now every time we go in the woods, we're like, right. Glocks yeah. ready and everything. We're like, dude, I'm not getting mauled. No way. One bear in all of Columbus. Yeah. And I'm, it, gl- I'm glad. I'm property. We and have. it would maul me probably. I'm glad we luck. don't have to mess with them. They're a pain at. in the ass. If you are baiting, they're a nightmare. Because really? they'll just w- find your corn pile and they'll just sit there just for like hours. All. And they'll sleep in it and then they'll wake up and just we eat had it a, all. We, we had one of, we, we had a permission piece that they had like goats. They had, they had a lot of goats. And oh, oh my God, God. They, they would like break free of their pen and we'd have like the deer, prop- deer, 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 deer. 400 goats. Jeez. And the, the property I killed Prodigy on. Yeah. And then it was, you know, our bait was gone in like yeah. 25 I seconds. just, I would text them. I was like, dude, they got out again. I'm worried because they can blow. They can blow. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, I it don't would be want, your fault. I'm like, I don't want your goats. They're just to sitting explode. there pounding on all the yeah. corn. And then you see an explosion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, so what did they do? How'd they get them back? I, they kept on getting them back in the fence. They would I, go herd them up. Dude, yeah. it was crazy. They would crawl under the fence like freaking well, like yeah, cats. Like, yep. I used to have problems with cows because, like, all of uh, our farm used to be cattle farm, and a lot of the surrounding stuff still is. And the fences are just, you know, it's not really maintained that well. So cows would get in. And my annoyance was with because we planted these food plots, and I was like, it's a lot of time and money into that. And there's cows trampling all of it. So I, I would call, like, my uncle or, like, the, you know, the, 
they were my uncle's cows and or the cow guy and they'd go rushing in there and try to get them out but then they would just run up into the like the thick stuff and so yeah. it's like they're just tromping all over the property and there's areas they can't get to and so and mow your food plots and mow the food plots mm. and so like after a while uh the cow guy was like stop doing that stop doing that we're not going to get them out of there what they would they would just open the gate and put more bait on the other side so they I, I had like a hundred pound pile of corn and they would dump like a five thousand they're just driving <laughs> a machine out there and dump it and then the cows would just realize it was there and then they'd filter back it's like ohio urban hunting yeah who can not bait back? that's it mm-hmm. and that that worked really well so now i know yeah and if anybody's listening if cows are in there don't you need you five thousand pounds of corn don't go in and try to run them out just call the neighbor and say hey $2, just thousand dollars bait on yeah. the other side of the fence and pull Jeez, them back over an expensive fix yeah plus all the deer are going to be eating over there how's your corn prices been they're pretty high yeah last year high. they were last year i think yeah. we ended up getting it the cheapest we got was seven yeah, that sounds right. Going yeah, I think the co-ops were selling it for like nine or nine twenty-five at one point. Jeez. Mine for six. Yeah, f- straight from straight the farmer. From the farmer. Yeah. farmer. Yeah, mm-hmm. we got ours from the mill. Cutting out we the middleman. We buy like straight two thousand pounds at a time. But we actually just go to all the local farmers. How much? How much at a time? From each Usually two thousand pounds. Notice. How much corn did you guys buy last year? Total <laughs> total bill. <laughs> so you're buying a ton total, at a time. Total bill probably fifteen hundred to two thousand. Woo. Yeah. It was what's that like? 15 15,000 pounds? It was probably about 10. 10? Which seems like okay if you're moving them on pallets but like Oh, that's the ton of corn. Well, man I bought man, I bought 50 pounds. I bought 5,000 pounds yeah. and it took two full trailer and F250 bed load fulls. Well, we didn't have anywhere to put it except we, I put upstairs it on, top up, on top of the garage. Two flights of stairs. So you carry it up oh, there and store what? it? Yep. Yeah. Well, if I leave it down, then the mice just tear it up. Yeah. And then I just get more pissed off whenever yeah. there's just loose corn all over the shed. You oh, ever yeah. run so hard you taste blood? Yeah. 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 And in like five minutes, that's what it's like. And oh. it's like that for like 45 yeah. minutes because it's 40 bags. It'll I get mean, your blood yeah. pumping. It's it, a good workout. It's a lot of corn. <laughs> Putting in the manpower. <laughs> Putting in the man hours. <laughs> there, yeah. There's the work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice if we could just drop a pallet off in the shed. But. Yeah. Yeah. That's... uh. You buy I mean, corn last year? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mine are rookie numbers compared to you guys. Really? Rookie numbers. Yeah, I bought like a thousand pounds. No, I probably bought. I put that out in a, s- a single run. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. Is anytime we get a new property, it's like you put out two bags of corn and it's gone in two days. It's amazing yeah. how how quickly it goes. They mow it so well, as could, soon as they find you, it. If you have ten spots, you know, and you're like, well, like hundred pounds ain't gonna quite cut, so we'll put two hundred pounds here. So there's four bags at every spot. Then you got ten spots. There's forty bags. That's a ton of corn. That's one two thousand pounds. There's our there's where our corn goes for everybody. Wondering. How do you get ten thousand? And it's pounds? two and it's two weeks and it's gone. Yeah, yeah. if yeah. that, if that, and yeah. especially in the suburban areas when these deer are like, what is this golden yeah. nectar from the gods? Yeah. They've never seen corn and it's before. Seven hundred does and fawns, and you're just like, damn it. Yeah, and you have to keep putting it out because you're like, I I don't know if everything's there. Yeah, who, who knows what else there that yeah. you get on camera? Yeah. Um, just a little, uh, one more time. I'll just put it out one, one more time. It's like gambling, dude. It's like <laughs> yeah. playing blackjack. One more time. Let me just see what happens. Yeah, that's what it. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I would assume we talked to somebody who bought like a lot of corn, like a lot, a lot, <laughs> a lot of guys. Remember. The guy uh, that holds that big eight point yep. that, that John shot yeah. last year, uh, he puts out twenty thousand pounds a year. Yeah. In, on one in a single spot. That's actually unreal. Yeah. That's I just in a single spot, bumps. like literally a mound. Like yeah. it is a giant twenty thousand pound mile mound of corn in a bit in a field. It's you have wh- to wait until the deer walks around. Yeah, you the, can't the see it on yeah. the <laughs> shoot it. <laughs> he's just shoot through he's the just corn. climbing up the corn and it's just sliding back down. <laughs> that's actually I would It's impressive. That is actually hilarious. That's it's the only spot that he hunt how does he get there? I the think, corn? Yeah. I don't know. Dump truck probably. Yeah. Drone. Drone. Drones <laughs> it in there. They're pretty well off. It's uh, it's funny because there's deer on that property that like nobody's ever seen before. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that big of a property, but some of us they have kind of gotten to know him, you know, and so he'll, he'll share pictures. Can you imagine being a deer and just, just walking walk. up on a mountain of You're food? You're like, is this normal? <laughs> You're like, okay, something's not right here. Yeah. Most mature bucks. I'm gonna would check be, it out, but <laughs> most mature bucks would be like, uh, that seems a bit. They fishy. probably just think it's like the fountain of youth because it's it's always been there. <laughs> yeah, they just they like, farmer forgot it. He it's forgot it's just to get it always been there. Yeah, it's, it's like a feeder. Like some of the mature bucks are scared of it unless they grew up yep. with it. 
Well, that's how those three and four year olds are getting killed in Ohio. Those really good three and four year olds are like they're smart enough, but I mean, if it's a good corn pile, they're gonna hit it and they're gonna die. I mean, that's what people are killing. People are killing 150, 160 inch three year olds in Ohio all the time. Mm. Oh yeah, the future two hundred, two hundred for sure. Mm. And they're just getting smashed at three because they're just not smart enough yet. Schwacked. Mm hmm. You know, especially once it gets cold. Ohio's winters get cold. The second it gets to yeah. a week or two of yeah. 10 degrees. That's what Ben Rising day. said. If you were in like a helicopter or an airplane over like Ohio in January, it's just corn piles. Corn piles yeah. everywhere. Everywhere. I'm surprised everywhere. it's even that. I'm surprised people go out when it's that cold. Yep. Let me sit in a blind with a heater <laughs> hmm. on their corn pile. It, it may be with a crossbow. Different parts of the country. But like th- there are. Def- Watch yourself. There man. are people that claim that like, you know, there's deer that won't come into corn pile. And. Maybe that's true somewhere, but like mm-hmm. we've had some deer that have we've had on camera that don't hit the corn. I've seen them skirt. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, they'll They're, be there, like in the background, skirt around, or like or, I've got bachelor group bucks right now that have not come to. I mean, right the now, bait. yeah, but they'll you be get, in the you area get long enough. Yep, they'll be in the area. And the other on, bucks will, but camera, but they won't. They won't hit the bait. We said Prodigy. the same thing about uh, about scrapes too. Like if you make a mock scrape and have a camera on it, like I've seen bucks that will. Check that scrape downwind, but they won't hit it. Yep. They're smarter than you think. 100%. They're like smarter they, than us. They just are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, Prodigy, we literally saw in person just two or three separate times just walk around a corn pile. Yeah. Not interested. He was probably eating somewhere else. Oh, for sure, but. but. I mean, that that would be the question is like, and I know that they do get killed, but how many mature bucks are getting killed on corn piles in Ohio versus three- and four-year-olds? I guess that determines on who's, well, it, who's justifying what's a mature deer. Well, no, no, no. I would say five plus. That's not the comparison, though. It's, it'd be the comparison to mature deer that are, that are getting, getting, getting killed killed over, overall. So what's the ratio? Yeah. Oh, it's going to be by far and away over corn piles. Yeah. By far and away. Yeah. Well, that's because how many, uh, what, 90% of people hunting deer in Ohio are hunting over call a corn it, pile on it, private it, land, at least. Yeah, yeah. Call it four-year-old and up. You know, last year in Ohio, the deer that got Let's say, how many deer over four years old do you think got killed last year in Ohio? What would we say? The number is like 198 total? 198,000 bucks or something got killed in Ohio last year? Okay, so let's say it's... So say 200,000. So say, what, 150,000 of those got killed over a corn pile? I'll say it's... I'm going to say it's... 15% of them were four years old or older? I would say probably less than that, almost. Less? Yeah, probably ten. Say ten percent. So you're talking about twenty thousand bucks over four or older get killed. I'd say eighteen thousand of them got killed over corn. Wow. The other two were on public land. Well, that's a good point because you can't can't get technically. I was say don't count them out. Don't count those public land guys. But yeah, technically you can't. I'd say sixteen to eighteen would be my guess over corn. That's fair. Wow, that's fair. And no corn and. 70% of those deer survive, probably. If you took away corn, some of those would still get killed. But I bet the vast majority of them would make it till... At least 50. To five five years old. That's where you have an immediate impact. In the short term, that sounds bad. We're like, well, guys want to kill deer. Yeah, I get it. But then you just have that many more older age class bucks and those numbers start it's the same to come thing like up. when we had in pennsylvania where they put antler restrictions in and everybody bitch and said we don't want antler restrictions we just want to kill bucks here we are whatever 20 years later and we kill really de- good deer in pennsylvania now mm-hmm. because of the antler restriction mm-hmm. same thing what is the antler restriction uh Four three three points to the side in most of the state uh, in the Pittsburgh, like urban areas, it's th- it used to be four points. Now it's three high. Okay, yeah. Our buddy Tony was trying to explain that to us, and yeah. we were just like, "Oh, I mean, yeah, we, that's not a thing in Ohio." Mm-hmm. No, I've seen people like propose stuff as far as like main beam length and stuff to like try that. to protect the two year. Well, the g- really good one year olds because we ha- we produce. In fact, I showed you that picture. <laughs> There's no hope for that, dude. People just yeah. cannot. Oh, they can't do it. They don't know. What they can't even count at. points, let alone. Say that's a 15 inch main beam. Now, uh, Mississippi does that. So, on Mississippi's, um, a lot of their public lands, you have an inside spread or a main beam restriction. It has to be 12 <laughs> or 15, 12 inches inside or 15 inch main beam to kill or 10 and 13, I think. Is How do you? Tell. I don't know if I could do that. I think, main beam I think thing. they just, you bank on the fact that people are just, if they're not sure, that deer's is going to live. That's fair. Right? That I can see. The part I can't see is, 
you know, somebody I mean, we're talking about in Mississippi. the stand. And be, I mean, everybody sits in the stand and thinks a, a, the deer they shot is a giant. And then they yep. get to it and it's like, ah, yeah, yeah. Well, this deer's not legal. And then what do they do? They just leave it there or mm-hmm. like... Yeah, they I bet it. they do. I bet I bet a lot of people leave deer in the woods if they make a mistake. Mm-hmm. I know they do it in Pennsylvania. So per, per the point restriction, like I think people in Pennsylvania shoot first, go see how yep. many points is. They're like shoot after. first, ask forgiveness later. Four, yeah. four point, they yeah. just leave it, oh, which is terrible. Thought, like I'd rather you just take it and you know not get fined or anything than just leave it there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's tough. But yeah, that's I think that's a big. Well, you should get fined, but yeah, I mean when, when you're starting to throw in like. Inches. inch measurements and like dude. yeah that's tough but well po- points is the only one that's like re because people can count most right? i mean we're talking about mississippi though yeah, just, <laughs> jerry can <laughs> count to nine yeah right that's my holy moly <laughs> uh, that's my wedding ring got caught on a tree stand a couple years ago you're an avatar yeah <laughs> the shocker forever in the shocker Dagum. position <laughs> all of it that's kind of wild so what happened Did you just get mauled by a bear no what my happened? wedding ring got caught on a tree stand <gasps> yeah. stick a stick, yeah, I was hanging. I hung the bottom stick, hung the second stick, was climbing down, and my wedding ring just got caught under a little, you know, piece like this. And I was, I kind of like leapt to the ground. I was like maybe a foot off the ground, and it just caught just my body weight. Dude, it wasn't even it, a cut. It just ripped off. Did it rip all the way off? No, it just skinned it. He's yeah. got pictures. Oh, oh. all right. Yeah. <laughs> He's it's got, got it's you're, you're driving home, so. It's I'll, called a degloving injury, so it's like. <laughs> so it just, it, it just ripped the skin off? off? In tendons and you'll, everything. You'll see. Like it didn't even really bleed because it just. Yeah, not a lot. What, okay. What is your initial thoughts? Boom, this happened. You look at your finger and you see this. What are you like? What are you thinking in your head? Hospital. <laughs> really? <laughs> like yeah. how far away am I from getting help? And pretty far. Yeah, at that point. It, it was. I, yeah, got to get back to. Were you like trying to scavenge the pieces of your body and then. No, like, it was all there. Pocket? It was all there. I had to like go like this. How, how long ago? 2016. My first year of marriage. He called wow. me. He called me and he's like, hey. Not I, too late to back I, uh, I'm, pr- I'm pretty good with yeah, the injury. He, he's like, hey, I got some bad news. It was like October 20th or something. I was like, did you miss one? And he's like, no, I ripped my finger <laughs> off. I was like, what? I made small talk for a while. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. uh, hey, uh, well, I got you. Yeah. Uh, I'm actually in an ambulance I might, right now. I might have to take work off on Monday because uh, I got to get my finger cut off. Oh, my God. Your face, though. Your face is hilarious. That's pretty chill about Yeah, that's it. his dad in the back thinking, like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's interesting, man. That's a story for the kids and the grandkids. It's a great icebreaker. Hey. It's my number one You're conversation like, hey. piece. Yeah. You would probably... <laughs> it, comes probably up, it comes up in every You probably would win a lot of door knocking by just saying, hey, let me tell you real quick about this. Yeah, I but, have nine reasons why you should let me have here. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Dude, I mean, we should cut our fingers over. off and try yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds great. <laughs> you let me hide here, I'll cut this uh, Hey, man, if it's any success, then... Yeah. I mean, well, I'll we think converted about it. a lot less than we thought. We should have thought this went through <laughs> a little bit. I mean, it's your left hand, it's your ring finger. I mean, it doesn't yeah. have that much. He was back to work a couple days later. You're bow hunting, like, oh, yeah. pretty soon after. I didn't miss a beat. Life's the same? Yeah. You know, the only time I notice it is at the, dr- at the drive-thru, taking change. Uh. Slips right there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it has to be the left hand that I stick out to take it. You know? <laughs> gloves for sure. You're like here, and they're like, okay. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. just I have a, a wacky whaley like on every glove. Yeah, I got you. Here, wait, I think I've got I've got a that. Um, was you it, like gonna pull it back? And it's just... was it that year or the year before that you killed your uh, your buck in Kansas? And it was the first time you like put a gut glove or something on after that it was really. Mm. Funny. Hey, I would have sued that company. Oh, it was hilarious. Expensive. Actually, I really wouldn't have, but like. I'm sure you probably thought about it, maybe. Uh, I I considered it, yeah. yeah. And you'd be sitting pretty. That's crazy. I'd be able to buy a fake one. <laughs> yeah. It was one of those big tungsten rings. Like, uh, it was kind of yeah, obnoxious. Yeah, big bulky. Honestly, I'd ordered one of these already because uh, it was clanking. It, was, it would clank off my bow, clank off, like, the tree stand stuff. You had Amazon Prime, man. If you had Amazon Prime, it this whole have, thing would have been changed. Might have been. I don't. I ordered it, and then like the next day, it came in the mail. After, put it on the nub. After that, wow. Yeah, I mean, Did I'm really sorry that happened it? to you, dude. No. So basically, there's an artery that runs up either side of your finger that supplies it with oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that? 
He's yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> that was a soft chuckle. He's just tears. We, he's, he's like laughing. There's just a single Shut tear. Shut a single tear for it. Um, and so the worst part of the whole deal was they were probing it, trying to see if it's like was intact, had a pulse, basically. And and they didn't. So like I went into surgery and they like told us they're like we're gonna see if we can find something, but more than likely probably not. So and your what wife if was like pull the plug anyway. She's like yeah. She's like I'm ready. Pull he, the plug. He had a great life. Would you stay I thought with I thought me? Thought about it. Stay with me. Peter. Here's here's a question. Let's just this is a completely fake scenario. Uh, mm. uh, Obviously, but you get there and they're like, "Hey, we can't put your finger on, but we can get a finger transplant." Whoa! And they give you like this small, like really nubby <laughs> finger. It's like a toe, actually. <laughs> Would you do it? Oh, Would you no. do it? No, no. just no. a big okay. toe. <laughs> yeah, just, just a, a big, big toe. It, it, well, so we don't have any fingers available, but we've got a perfectly good big size toe. Size forty-six mm. wedding ring wouldn't be worth it. If it was a more valuable, if it was a thumb. Yeah. yeah, maybe. Yeah. 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 What's okay. the finger now look like? Yeah. That's that's would a big you, qu- would could, you could trade look real nasty. What if all they could put on there is a wiener? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, listen, we can make it functional, but it will be a penis. <laughs> Double the pleasure. <laughs> You're like, My so God. <laughs> you can yeah. give me a second. I'm still thinking. I'm like, will people be able to tell? They're like, yes. They'll be able to <laughs> yeah. tell. You will people cross, be able to tell? Yeah. You're like, yes. You can cross yeah. door knocking off. <laughs> Are we talking average size It'd be more or of a, a thumping, a mushroom stamping the doors? <laughs> That is wild. <laughs> <laughs> just gets hard sometimes. Yeah. Just give me a second. It's it'll get there. It'll get yeah. there. <laughs> In that case, you'd probably need it. Yeah. Yeah. The thumb is is pivotal. Uh, <laughs> y- you can do without almost any of these fingers. Honestly, even guys that lose this one, you just move down to the next one. Then it's just like you just do this. Yeah. I discussed this with a now hand, with a hand probably doctor. Don't, quite a bit. You don't even notice probably. I don't notice at yeah. all. Yeah, and uh, frankly, most people don't notice. Like, unless I bring it up, like you guys didn't notice. Well, I, I yeah, didn't notice. because we talked about did it you? afterwards. Yeah. Well, you said, did you lose some hand strength for a while when you were lifting and stuff? Did you? I mean, probably just for a minute. It took a because you had some like I, phantom pain because they talked about having to do a surgery. Yep. Oh wow, yeah. Well, I that that was that. more for the gap. Like yeah. it was to make your hand more, uh, whatever webbed. Yeah. They, <laughs> Well, no. I don't know if Web is just the like, right term. <laughs> dude, dude's Michael Phelps in the water. Bro actually lost about a second on his uh, swim time. Looks but, like the know. penguin when it comes out. Jeez. They talk about yeah. they'll pull this metacarpal out, and it just pulls. Tightens your, her up. Yeah, pulls it together. It gets rid of the gap, basically. Mm-hmm. And so they, they were like, you should do that. And I was like, eh. You're like, I kind of like the shocker. <laughs> yeah, I was like, Spider-Man. I, think, I think I'll keep it. Yeah, I don't know if I would do that. Uh-uh. No, well, no, no, no. honestly, I had broken this, like, metacarpal a couple years before. So that finger was already kind of... <laughs> it was just fast. <laughs> it was, ready to it go was already... I was, it yeah. was, you didn't have a warranty on it, so... No. Voided. Get rid of it. I've been hurt way worse than that. So when that happened, I was like... It's not a fatal injury. Actually, that's the first thing that came to mind. I was like, it's not, I'm not going to die. Like, it's, you know, just, it's a, it's a flesh wound or whatever. But I've broken, I had broken this metacarpal. I've broken this thumb, like a boxer's fracture. I've broken this humorous snowboarding. I broke this growth plate on my ankle. His face hit bike. a, a bulldozer. Right? That was the, yeah, my biggest one is I hit a bulldozer, like face first with my dirt bike. So these are all cats. Oh, with the dirt bike. See my, I got a trach. I had a tracheostomy Dude, in there for a while. It looks like you got in a fight with like a wrecking ball. Yeah, he's know? not easy on himself. I got a bone graft. That's my nose is so straight. I got a, a bone graft in my nose. It comes all the way down. Can't got, take a punch. I got all kind of pin, <laughs> pins Can't. and stuff in here. Wow. Oh. Nick or I have to Dude, sacrifice I've, our faces if a fist is coming. We just have to throw it in there in front of him so he doesn't dang. get hit. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I'm just weak. Like I've gotten a few bad paper cuts, and like I've lost the toe now. Yeah, yeah. It, I've stubbed my toe pretty hard, dude. <laughs> It'll teach you though, because I mean, I'll, it took all those injuries for me to be like, I should probably slow down a little bit. Like you know. So now this was the last uh, major thing, and that was seven years ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So exactly. Or you did the uh, the Joker thing recently. Oh yeah, I cut my I was cutting a scrape branch off, and I caught my this with a wicked saw. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's perfect for a. Part of how I got these scars. <laughs> I used to, I used to my dad used to be a real that. drinker. <laughs> those those saws that you hold I've and you myself. flip up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah. If you use like, dude, oh, yeah. I, I don't cut. I'm just like, I yeah. fling those things yeah. around a lot. Yeah, that's just it's like, it's going for the flash. It's just the easy thing to do, and then like sometimes those little you bolts get, get loose, and they'll just. Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. do that. Get a machete. Yeah. I should. Or a we weed should invest in a machete. Yeah, machete's been Tough our go-to. Talk from a guy with nine fingers, buddy. Yeah. We got all ten. Yeah. yeah. 
Or wow. if you get married, you know, a wedding ring, yeah, go for go for rubber. Yeah. For sure. Lots of critical tools to take in the woods, though. A rake, mm-hmm. a rake would be another good one. Mm-hmm. A rake is one that we added mostly uh, this year. <laughs> yeah. Dude, we almost every single way. time I go out, it's like, because you don't want to keep going back. Like, you don't want to go back to the same yeah. spot. You're nope. like, so every time I go out, almost, I take, I take a chainsaw, a weed whacker, a rake, a machete. This is like for like summer prep stuff, I'm assuming. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Those would be the main tools, I guess. Camera Dude. batteries. Oh, pole saw. Pole almost saw. every time I take a pole saw. We're bad with it. We just, I mean, we, we, we have our hands and then a stick that we find it and we're just like, whoosh, and I seem you guys, bad. you're not driving up to that. Like you're carrying everything in. Yeah. yeah. So that's, there's your challenge. And if you've got a hundred pounds of corn or whatever with you. Also, we just don't want to bother Like a lot of with permission pieces, we just don't want to bother them. Like we asked one person if we could put a food plot in and we lost that permission piece. So we just right. don't do that. It's like, we would love to do all these crazy, you know, yeah. property management stuff, but it's like. Let's say they do say yes, and then they move the next year, and now you're like, "Well, I invested ten yeah. grand in this food plot of this area, and I can't even like can't you, do anything lose. with it." It's really tough. It's kind of a catch twenty two. It's sure. kind of a catch twenty two. I, so I think that. It go- that's where it goes back to the baiting aspect, and it's like, that's about it. It's temporary, and yeah, it's temporary. It's not gonna. Eat. I mean, if somebody says, "Hey, you can't hunt anymore," you just stop baiting. Yeah, there's no damage done. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's the. Uh, and they'll have a battle with that whenever it comes up as, you know, if, if they make a sweeping change, like Kansas was going to sweeping change, then yeah, those ur- urban areas are going to become freaking tough to kill deer. Yeah. I mean, it's really so overpopulated. So if you take that out, I mean, they're going to become even more overpopulated. Well, and then that's where it's like, at some point somebody says, Hey, these hunters aren't very efficient at doing their job. <laughs> that guy right there. <laughs> yeah. Check out our last video. We're not our last video. It's called The Season from Hell, and if you guys haven't watched it, a little bit about us. We do a lot of hunting, um, a lot of urban hunting, especially last year's kind of whenever we got into it. But, I mean, I got on a pretty big deer, shot it opening day. I had this thing patterned, like I had it in the palm of my hand. I thought I made a pretty good shot, you know. like it was Three kind of, big deer, right? What? Three big deer, right? Two uh, big deer, three opportunities. Two big deer, yeah, three yeah. opportunities. Honestly, I just got in my own head, if I'm being honest with you. I think confidence is... Um, killed you it killed me yeah because in my head i wasn't thinking about the shot i was thinking about at what was at stake because at the time i had quit my job to do hunting and content creation full time oh wow so i was yeah that's a big leap it's all or nothing and you know i mean i gotta make money i gotta put food on the table and i was like this is it for us like this is this is gonna be this is gonna be our year and yeah i just got i kind of got in my head you know i played that first shot over again um so i ended up shooting him like a couple inches high and a couple inches too too much forward i think but like the way that it, it entered and the time of you know the day it was like a couple minutes before the end of and legal shooting light left. yeah and i just made the call and i shot him we were both stoked about it and then he ended up just living like we looked for this deer for freaking uh, deer tough for man. days and we couldn't find him and then he uh he ended up showing up on the trail camera like two or two or three weeks later and he ended up giving me one more opportunity and i blew it i just he was facing me the whole time um, that's another thing about baiting that like you don't think about mm-hmm. those deer are gonna those bucks are gonna be facing where they think the threat's gonna be and where they I mean that deer was shot at so he's like well I'm gonna face the direction that I th- feel the danger's in so he's just looking at me the whole time yeah and they don't have to move once yeah. they're at the bait pile yeah and then he just boom he just t- he just took off I stopped him I did have a shot but I just missed it and I think it was just because the way I was shooting my bow I was just so in my head and then yeah that stinks <laughs> it's still kind of a sore a sore spot but, yeah, it's but that's a good reality thing. yeah that's reality of Dude, content it's, story. it's it's hard to admit i mean what are you going to do tonight but it, it it's hard to like say like i i've done it too like i've just completely whiffed like on yeah. deer at 20 yard i missed a 160 something inch deer in kansas at noon on a on a thing at 20 yards yeah 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 it's tough man and I'll, a lot of these channels won't show you that because they don't want to be seen as sure failure but, that's I mean, what they think it's oh this is a failure mm-hmm. to in all actuality i think most people are gravitating well, are. more towards i mean that's the reality yeah like, but that's, you're a failure in it's that moment. the truth it's the reality of things and i think most people want to see that kind of stuff now yeah well i'd say that's the majority of hunters yeah i mean you look at people like lee and nobody else is out there killing three booners in a month right 85 percent of people miss a deer 95 percent of them miss a deer the first probably three years that they're hunting let yeah. alone 
yeah. however many they miss in a year. Yeah. Dude, misses are hard. It, it's it's devastating. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like... You question everything. Clean misses. I don't know what's worse. Clean misses or like hitting a bad shot. Bad shot. Bad shot, shot eats worse. me up. Yeah. yeah. Well, because a clean miss, you have the immediate... Uh, you at least know. Yeah, it's the relief. You know of, right away. He's yeah, fine. I feel like you're more mad at yourself because you're like... Especially at like a 20-yard shot, it's like you just overthink the shot and you're like, I've done this If you hit the deer, times. there's hope. Sure. There's, even if it's false hope. Small. There is a little hope in your head. But at what cost? Like, sure. Yeah. At what cost? Right. You're like, yeah, I got an arrow in him, but am I going to spend the next 10 days trying to well, all these woods it's and the then next, he's going to It's live? the next day usually when you are have been tracking for 15 hours and you're coming up empty that like you're at the lowest of low. Because now you've wounded this deer and you're not going to find it. And you're ruining the spot. And you ruined the spot. Like everything at that point is like, I suck. I quit. Like I'm done with this. Well, do guys, I mean, guys like us that stake like our entire lives. I, I mean, not that it is our livelihood necessarily, but it's, it's all I think about. And so when mm -hmm. that moment comes, it's like, they only come so often. Yeah. Very, you know, very, I mean, the more work you do, the more frequently they come, but no more than a few times a year, mm -hmm. you know, for most people. And for me for a long time, it's one, once a year. And it's like to blow it. It's just like, man, I just like. Hmm. It was a it was the lowest I've ever been. Like I've been depressed before, but that was that was a tough spot for me, especially because mm -hmm. like I think both times I thought I hit this deer, like two two different deer that I'm talking about, but both of them were like pretty close to 170 inches. But the first time I shot him, I texted my wife. I'm like, I did it. It was all mm. like, it oh, paid off. I'm and then there. to go home and I had to like, text his wife on the, whenever we were going back home the second day after tracking him, I was like, Hey, uh, we didn't find him. I just wouldn't talk to Zach for a little bit. That's literally what yeah. it was. Yeah. Mm. I, it was I've been there, man. I shot one in Kansas, wide boy in 18 and did the same thing. I had just killed that deer like a week before here in Pennsylvania and first morning 180 plus inch deer comes right out i draw back just a monster just, like a 10 year old i was deer. like smoked <clears throat> smoked there's a another five-year-old tending to do underneath me i'm talking to my wife facetiming the kids like and i get down and um you know i walk over and i'm like it's weird like i look like clean passer can't find my arrow what the hell I look six feet behind where the deer was standing or in front of where the deer was standing and my arrow's laying on this brush pile. I I'd, I'd hit straight into the not uh the femur Nothing. head and it hit so hard it blew my lighted knock off. So it looked like it passed through because the knock yeah gone. And it, all it did is broke him off at That's the feral. Wild. What 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 broadhead were you using? Ramcat at the time? Probably. Ramcat. Okay. Fixed. But just hit it square. No, no, no arrow building happening at that point. It was like a, mm -hmm. we're shooting three fifties at that point. Yeah, probably. Like a maximum three fifty. No. Ounce yeah, no, no FOC paid attention to just hunter grain ramcat on the front. And, and I killed and, a bunch of deer. But just had killed that deer. And a monster Kansas buck. I mean, if oh, there's a, a white-tailed deer shoulder that's going to stop it, I mean, his, well, deer would, was his two, would have been the one. two eighty plus on the hoof. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Just, just a giant. Those are tough. Those those are tough, and I, I replay like, it all the time. Yeah, those are things that you don't need a camera to remember exactly how it plays <laughs> you out. You don't want no. Nope. I, I, I watch no. it every night in my head. <laughs> I thought I thought you handled that really well, though. I I don't around you guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, I mean it. it uh, well, the, the hard part was, and this is where you know miss versus hit is like I uh, I finally found blood. And I well, you'd killed this thing like two weeks before. Yeah. so you were still riding that. Well, uh, yeah, I was like. And so I, I was following blood and I was in super thick stuff by myself. So I set my bow down, took like two steps and he stands up at like 20 yards and it's super thick, but like, I could tell he's hurt. Like, I mean, he did not feel, he only went 50 yards and laid right down. And so he kind of was like limping out of the way. I grabbed my bow, ran up around and it's, it's a real tight, like Creek pinch. And so he never came out and I sat there for what, four hours, like four hours wow. just sitting there. And eventually I was like, I got like, I got I don't know. I don't know how hard he's hit at this point. And so there was like a, a tree I was going to try to shimmy up. And so I walked like five yards. I start to climb the tree. He was 15 yards in the Creek laying there in front of me for four hours. I had no idea. We probably were just like both laying there in the grass. Like, wow. And he just got up and. Pff, oh, so he took off. Wow. I found a shed the next year from that, from that year. Yeah. And I mean, he was hurt. We said in there. Oh my! Look at look at that thing. Yeah. And 
that's like, yeah. missing several it. brows and stuff chewed up from that year. Dang and squirrels. Had like a 10 incher there. So is there any, is there any, uh, is, is there any tines missing completely? Yeah. So this was, uh, almost 10 inches probably on that side. This is a Kansas buck. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then there was another brow kicked off the front and another, another one on the back here. Dude. Monster. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mass measurement something. on that thing. Yeah. And I, uh, we got, we started hunting out on that property in 2014 and we watched him every year and he wow. blew up. He was, he was like consistently probably mid fifties as a 10 point. And then, um, we were coming back from, I think Weston's wedding when we got pictures of him and I'm like, holy shit. For whatever reason, he just blew up. Giant. It's a good rattler set. <clears throat> yeah. Need the other side. I just stare at it. But so it was the, literally the next hunting season. Uh, our, one of our buddies had hit a buck and I was in there grid searching and I looked. And you and found that? Like that. Wow. And I was like, I was like, that looks like a shed. I walked over. I'm like, you gotta be shitting me. That's actually pretty cool though. It was nuts. There's so many stories that I'm sure everybody has stories like this. Mm-hmm. Where, I mean, almost every hunter that I talk to, they all have like some crazy, like that's the stuff that keeps experience. you coming back, dude. Hunting story. Like that, even as sick as I was around that, and like it, and, and also like I didn't, I hated that I I injured him because we thought he was gonna be dead. He did end up making it, but he looked like shit the next year. Mm-hmm. He had like a, a baseball or basketball size knot on his where the broadhead was bent, and he went to like 105 inches. Oh wow! Yeah, like he, yeah, I mean, he, he just was phew, tanked. Yeah, he probably died shortly after that. But you know, that still is like that struggle and that failure is what drives me to be like I can be better than that. Yeah, I can I, figure out a way to succeed on that. I think it's crazy how tough these deer are, though. <laughs> that that the buck that I shot um, this year, he looks good. I think. Yeah. Like he yeah. doesn't look like he's not crazy. A beat. I, I mean, think dude, it's because you shot him so early. I mean, you shot him opening day. So he just had time to recover. Mm-hmm. I mean, by the time November rolled around, he looked fine. I mean, he he, he was, didn't have any hair in that area, but he, he looked, looked like fine. he was in chasing shape. And I shot him September twenty sixth, twenty fourth. Where did you hit him? High shoulder. Um, high shoulder. Yeah. I mean, that'll do it. He, he dropped at the shot probably mm. two inches. They don't like that them high shoulder heads. Nope. No, nah, he was pissed off. No, he dropped as soon as that shot. You can see it, which is so crazy for an urban deer that's probably never been shot at. Yeah, that he reacted um, like yeah. that? Just yeah, the sound. There was just a, a guy sound. Mowing, a, mo- a guy mowing his lawn 30 minutes prior to that, 40 yards away from us. Yeah, we could have spit on the guy mowing his grass, and then literally 30, 40 minutes later, a booner walks out. <laughs> and then reacts to a shot. Yeah, and like I knew that whenever deer are like eating or they're feeding and their heads are down, just out of natural anatomy, when they go to take off, they lift their head mm-hmm. and their body dips. drops. And I knew that, so I was like, "Well, I'm not going to do that." And I waited for him to pick his head up, and he he still ducked a little bit. I'm not gonna say he, he ducked enough to you know to save his life, but uh, mm. I'd say so. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, two inches low. I mean, you're in long. Mm-hmm. For sure, and we had great blood for a while. So it was know. wild. There was there's even some like a little, uh, like a little bubble. You probably hit could have. I mean, does lungs fill little. that entire cavity? Like people talk about that dead area. It it ain't much, and if it is, it's back on the deer. Like yeah. in the front, those lungs fill that entire cavity. And I, and I wonder if it if it's different. Based upon like if there's a lot of if they're like taking a full sure. breath, oh I'm sure, or if is. you catch them when they're breathing yeah, out, sure. you know what I mean? Like that yeah. that could make a difference. I don't know if there's a way to really tell when you're shooting, or maybe that's not what you should be looking for when you're shooting. I don't know. I've never heard anybody even talk about that. I don't know. Yeah, that's weird, right? I've never I've never thought about that. I've never noticed a deer like taking breaths. Like it wasn't a, a noticeable diaphragm expansion. Maybe if it was colder and you could see their breath, that'd be the only way to tell. But I mean, yeah, I mean, I I still even at that, I I guarantee you probably hit high long. But I mean, I mean, we two, talk, in, two inches on that. I mean, that that's the difference between a yeah. deer that's alive. And we a deer talked about it. Uh, I don't know if it's the last podcast or one before, but you know, the number of deer that can survive on a single lung hit is like it's off the charts. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's it's crazy how tough those animals could be, especially with him ducking like that. I mean, you could have clipped the back long mm-hmm. just to the top. Mm-hmm. Because I mean. And they'll bleed, and there's arteries around there too. He clawed it up pretty, pretty quickly within. Like well, that's the problem with those high shots is it's got a. Piles of blood like that yeah. Every three yards. 
Yeah, it's oxygenated. So, I mean, that's the, those high shots is that cavity has to fill up to push blood out unless it's coming like right at impact mm -hmm. there. So, I mean. Yeah, we were shocked because he broke he broke the arrow. So there was like 16 inches of penetration on, on that arrow and he just broke it off. So I just Holy it, cow. Like it, it, it made it Probably through. Probably went through, yeah. Yeah, it made it through. And we never found the other side. So he was carrying it for at least a little bit. Pulled kinda, it out. Kind of brought him. Were you shooting? Uh, Montex. On, uh, G5 M3s. M3s. Fix mm. that. <laughs> we're yeah. thinking about it. Yeah. We're I, thinking about I would it. fix that. The Hunter Podcast is brought to you by Hoyt Archery. Dude, where would we be without our Hoyt bows? Probably shooting crossbows. <laughs> or, or a Matthews. Yeah. <laughs> One in the same. Yeah. But in all seriousness, we love being Hoyt guys because you stand out. When you're in this room full of other people that shoot these other types of bows, I feel like the Hoyt guys just stick out. Dude, it's just a legit bow. I mean, th th especially that carbon riser, man. I mean, I, I know that they've got several other aluminum lines as well. But for, for me, I'm shooting that RX-5 uh, in the carbon model. They've since come out with the RX-7. And uh, I can't tell you how much I love being a Hoyt guy amongst a C4 of Matthews guys. So we're out there, I think, pro proving them wrong, shooting 80 pounds and uh, you know, killing stuff. Hey, man, if you want to get serious, get Hoyt. What do you guys shoot? Expandables. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Well, it depends on your bow and arrow setup, but mm -hmm. and I'm not saying I want to save that deer, but it certainly they'll give you more forgiveness in terms of give it a throw shot, hole. Shot placement. We're thinking about it for South Dakota because oh yeah, we'll some shoot, of those we'll shots shoot. are going to be from farther away. Because you're still shooting Montex. Uh, the M3s, their new models are they similar to the. So Montex? they're similar to the Montex that are not vented. Mm. So how people solid. About, yeah. How if you like the G5, shoot those. Uh, Mega meats. Mega the meats. mega meats. Those are that's meats. a good broadhead. Yeah, we have a ton of them. Yeah. Killed a doe with one last year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that. Oh yeah, that was brutal. That was <laughs> yeah. like a shotgun shot. Like it was, it was brutal. There's longer range shots out in South Dakota. The other thing is, and and most of the time you can see what happens with that deer. But that ground, if it bleeds, it's gone. There's no blood. It sucks into that dirt so fast. You see it go down. Yeah, I mean you're not tracking very easily out there. In fact, uh -huh. if you shoot and it goes out of sight, I'd run up and get get a vantage point and see if you can watch it. 100%. Absolutely, because if you're gonna have to try to follow blood, I'm, seriously, it's like you're looking, you're like blood trail and stuff. And I mean, like his, you double lung that thing, and we, I remember us tracking, and we're like, Dude, where's the blood? It just for just, fun, we're like, <laughs> wait, we could see him laying up there, but we're looking for, and it was trying to find it. Tough, soaked it in. Yeah, we were shooting. Um, we have been shooting the hypodermics, Rage hypodermics, hundred grain, tripans or tripans. Yeah, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. And then we're looking at the Severs in a 125. I'm going to be shooting the Severs this year. Or probably. Bomars. 125. Or Bomars. Yeah, I'll try his. Sure. Which is similar. Yep. Um, but yeah, those would be just rear deploy, streamline, tough. What are you guys shooting bows and arrow wise? Uh, Hoyt VTM 34s this year. Mm hmm. Uh, 70 pounds. Yeah, yeah, 70 pounds. Yep. You're shooting the Victory Rip TKOs. Same setup. Then. 300 spine. That's what, that's what you're shooting? Same yep. setup. With an outsert or anything? Yeah, it's got a... Yeah. Uh, that little stainless outsert. steel the Victory. Standard one mm -hmm. that comes with that's it. exactly what I'm shooting. Yep. Yep. And same then, same setup. Yeah, literally. that's that's plenty to handle uh, an expandable. Yep. I, I've killed okay. a, a ton of deer with uh, that tripan with that same setup. I'm excited, dude. I'm really excited. I love the way this... I love the way the Hoyt shoots. Yep. You know, the Hoyt with the victories and that, that outsert that adds, you know, whatever it is, 50, 45 or 55, grand? 47 or 50. Yeah. Yep. And then the only thing we're looking at this year is you put a 125 on there. Yep. Go into a 125 okay. for a broadhead. Just a little bit more weight and FOC up front. We just dropped ours off at the shop the other day. So we're mm -hmm. still, yeah, we're going to shoot the, the, but the arrows are the same as last year. I'm shooting 80. So I got there a, you uh, go. I shoot high plates. Not surprised. Yeah, I, that's all right. He's I shoot, like, I'd shoot 90 if I could. I shoot the Victory Vaps, the yeah. 250 spine. Okay. Just because they have a, a, st a stiffer spine. Yeah. And it's like a micro. That arrow is coming arrow. out like a rocket ship on that. So bow. I shoot a 500 grain total arrow setup. Okay. Because you got the Packs ethics. Punch. I do the ethics yeah. outsert system. I do like a heavier outsert. I, I don't know exactly what your breakdown is and stuff, but it's the same. It's the, you know, whatever, the 47 stainless steel. The 125 will help. Yep. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, because that was already at like fifteen something percent. What will you? What will your total arrow weight be? Uh, uh if I go one twenty five, four sixty two or something like that. Sixty two. Yeah. Mm hmm. So the top end probably where you want to be. Yeah. Ultra draw length. Yeah. How fast is twenty nine? 
uh, my arrow will be going 300 feet per second. Yep. Which is, I think, a sweet spot. That's yeah. where you want to be. Yep. Heavy, yeah, heavy hit, big cut, on impact. Mm-hmm. That's what we want. A- any faster is, like, great, but not worth sacrificing the weight. Yeah, I was wondering, like, at what point does it become, like, not really? Probably the people matter. shooting, like, well, on a 70-pound, anybody shooting 525 or heavier, probably, grain errors. That's why I'm in that 460. In fact, I was 430 You'll something. notice that's substantial. You're saying, yeah, 70 pounds. If yep. you're shooting 500 grains at, it's at gonna 70 slow. pounds, it's going to be yep. lobbing. Yeah, that's where uh, that's where I'm in that 460 this year if I go mm-hmm. 125. Mm-hmm. I, I've killed plenty of deer at 430 grains mm-hmm. with a 100-grain broadhead. Yep. No yeah, problem. I'd give that a try. I think you got... Where are you at? S- uh, same I, setup? No, I'm running the gold. I'm still running the gold tip airstrikes. Okay. 300 spine. Same, uh, yeah. pretty much though, as the victories. Yeah, yeah. Yep. A lot of them are pretty much the same arrows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Working in a bow shop will teach you a lot. Yeah. Yeah. He's my bow guy. There you go. I like know the basics, but he's the one who's just. Yeah, we have a bow guy. We just, locked he in has our bows. <laughs> yeah. I've been going to the same shop since I was like, yeah, 10 years old. Okay. And I, yeah, I don't know a whole lot about. Uh-huh. I mean, I mean, I get how it works and stuff, but I'm not like a tech. Well, it's because yeah, we're, bow, I, we're bow hunters, not archers. I can take my stabilizer on and off to put it in the case. Yeah, <laughs> freaking bow tech. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fun. But you lose. I hardly shot my bow for two and a half, three years. I was a bow tech. That's what it's on. these guys like. We talk about hunting and they're just like miserable because we talk about hunting and they don't hunt because they're just mm-hmm. working on bows. And yeah. Oh no, I still took my time off to hunt, but it's just like as far as the time I'd work on a bow for eight, bows for eight or ten hours a day, and I'm like, I don't want to go. You're shoot gonna my really bow. go and do your stuff. No. no, it's like working at a tattoo shop. Everyone's like, when are you gonna get a new tattoo? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in a tattoo shop all day. Yeah, I don't, I don't really feel like worrying about my next one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, those are that's that's a good setup. Yeah, we've we've talked that discussion back and forth on arrow weight and fixed versus expandable. We're we're sold on a high quality expandable rear deploying. I mean, that's it's a big argument. Same as huge. All, yeah, it's a lot of people it doesn't seem like it, but pe- when we if we post anything, it's like well, people are so oh everybody's too. gonna chime in on it. It's like any Facebook group chat. If you say what's the best, what's the best broadhead, dude? It's pure comedy. Uh, yeah, a lot of that, I mean, just delete them nowadays because it's just, yeah, it's worse than freaking Repu- Republicans versus Democrats. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. insane, dude. Yeah. Democrats higher, being higher, the, higher stakes the for crossbow sure. shooters. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> They're like, a <laughs> compound bow is just as good as a You're crossbow. I'm like, what are you talking about? Hmm. Well, we don't, I, I don't have an issue with fixed blades, obviously. I mean, people should shoot whatever they feel confident with. But like, I think there's situations like we talked about the elk hunts potentially on a sure. fixed blade. Sure. For really, you know, pounding through a shoulder blade. Well, and that's why I say it's dependent on your setup. Because, like, if you're not shooting a heavy enough, you know, mm-hmm. forward of center arrow with a high poundage bow, then I, I wouldn't recommend an expandable. You need something that will penetrate. Mm-hmm. And penetration is second, you know, is very important, but a second to accuracy. Yep. And I think field points yield the highest accuracy. And if you can get the durability out of them, you should afford yourself the forgiveness that they give with shot placement. Yeah, and the expandables. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's... And it's not that you can't make um, fixed points shooting accurate. It's just that most people will shoot with fill points. Then they put on their fixed blade broadheads and they don't tune it and just mm-hmm. assume that it's going to shoot the same. The same. problem right. is so many people don't have a good bow shop. They, they don't know how to tune a bow. Well, no. even if your bow is perfectly tuned, like so many things can happen. Like yeah. in, in the field, I just, I don't. In uh, the field and depending to on. That. People buy cheap Allen broadheads from Walmart, ten dollars for a three pack, and they're like, yeah. Like, I mean, I shot all over the place. What you know, muzzies, hundred gray muzzies for years, because that's what I'm saying on a Walmart shelf for yeah. twenty bucks. You know, that's just what it was. And I mean, there's still a lot of people that do that. Yeah. You know, and they they shoot, you know, all year and sight in with their field point, and then they put on this giant fixed blade, and it will plane, and it will change, and they just don't care. And then they wonder what happened when they shoot. <laughs> you know, that's it's a user error. I I just think there's a lot of prep that goes into to the hunting season that most people just don't do. Mm. Yeah, I know, I know a ton of people who just they will not shoot, shoot their bow all summer. Or, yeah, crossbows. Mm. Well, then we don't have then, to at that point. then you don't have to do yeah, any that's summer. Exactly my point. Yeah, I I mean, we talked about it before. I hate summer just in general because it's just hot and 
I don't know. Everybody's everybody's happy about vacation. Muggy. I'm just thinking about deer season. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, it's the year. It's the shed hunting and the scouting, and then the camera setup in the summertime, all leading into fall. Which, you know, you just wrap yourself up. I would just feel weird if I like do nothing and then it's like, oh, season opens next week. Like I'm gonna go hunt, and then you just go. The difference is between people who like deer hunting and people who love and live and breathe it. Yeah, mm -hmm. there's a lifestyle to bow hunting that I feel like, like compound bow hunting i would say i just, just feel like there's levels like i used to hate the summer all the time but i also didn't do any work in the summer mm -hmm. I, i'd shoot my bow but as far as like sure. property management putting cameras up getting new properties mm -hmm. but now it's like dude summer's fly i can't believe season starts i know i almost month. wish that we had more time it's crazy yeah. it's i feel, I feel stressful. unprepared oh, dude. stressful for me like praying for rain all the time we talk like about, dude all the time we sit here and we're like you know oh it's may like we're gonna be doing food plots and this and like this how we started this podcast, dude, I am spent this week. I've been on the move cause we've got rain and I got to get seed in the ground. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, so I've just been full tilt. I got like two, three cameras up, two of which work in Ohio. I'm all pissed off about that. Cause I had like 15 of them on my truck. I'm like, Oh, I'm going to put all these cameras. I barely had time to get three of them out. Yeah. Wow. It's just, there's well, no where, time. That's where the dynamic is different. Like that I was saying, I appreciate earlier because you guys are hunting urban areas and, and permission ground and stuff. So like you're not spending nearly as much of any time planting food plots and doing that kind of thing as much as you are probably trying to find your back. Access and scouting. Yeah, I Access would enjoy that though. Like oh, yeah, to be the goal is to, to get a piece of property at some point, whether it's good or bad and just build it. You know, it's good it to have both. Takes eight yeah. to 10 years to actually get to a point where there might be a booner on it. But like that would be fun for me to, a, well, it's good. Project. It's good to have options. Like, if you guys get a piece like, it, and you should. It's it's awesome to have a piece of property like that that you can invest into and like manipulate and, and potentially um, get in another state. So you have Columbus to hunt, yeah, and then you yeah. can go to Kentucky and mm -hmm. manage your property. And hunt but there. it makes it really nice if you don't have all of your eggs in that basket. If you're like, hey, this is our the home farm, and we're going to yep. do everything we can to it, but you know, we've got all these other places to hunt. That's, that's what I do. Like I've got a home farm in Ohio and it's like, I, we put all of the effort into that as far as plant food plots and the, mm -hmm. uh, the habitat work and stuff like that. I haven't killed a buck there in a couple of years. You know, I end up going to another nearby permission property or frankly, it's, it's pretty cut and dry. Like uh, the deer on our home farm are not as good as meaning, uh, they just aren't there like mm. they are in these other right. farms and the and the the main difference is is pressure yep that's what i was gonna say that's what's also so tough about buying land is it's an investment and you have no idea what the neighbors are going to be like you can make it the best thing ever but every three and a half year old four and a half year old gets killed then you're kind of screwed and you're gonna have it just just pressure dude just people being there like yeah. for mm -hmm. me it's like my, my parents like like it's their farm right so they yeah. uh, give farm tours and host people i got a picture today of some woman walking through a food plot and i'm like so how do you get around that? Just buying a big enough property and just kind of making no. the, no. the middle of that research, or? research the area as much as everything. Like Jared and I bought one. Well, we're under contract. We're finished buying one in Illinois right now. And, um, you know, we went and looked at it and we're like, this looks great, but then you kind of got to understand what's around it. So you just got to find the knowledge of people that really understand what you're trying to accomplish. It's not like, right. Hey, I'm just trying to kill a deer here. Like I want to kill a giant. And then they're like, okay, well, that's what these guys want to do. And nobody hunts this and nobody hunts this. And you must these have guys to know a lot of information before pulling a trigger on purchasing a property. Absolutely. Like and it's hard to get all that up front. I mean, there's a history on the property helps a lot. So like some things we're looking at at this one in Illinois is it's not a bait state, right? So that's something that and coming from a bait state like Ohio, mm -hmm. we're, uh, it balances the playing field like right away. We see that as, sure. a, as an advantage. We're like, okay, I know, you know, that, uh, we can put the effort into this farm and, and it should like manifest in, you know, attracting deer, like naturally. It's not like the, the neighbors on any side can go just dump a corn pile. So that's big. Uh, also realizing like what you said, um, like what the surrounding properties have to offer, like a lot of it is big ag. And so we're looking at our property as primarily, it's, it's got like 50 acres of CRP on it. And it's cover. Oh, that's beautiful. It's, it's cover. And so you know, even though we've only seen it in July, mm -hmm. uh, we know that when all those crops come off, it's going to be like essentially a, a wasteland. Like there'll be yeah. very little like on the landscape. Like, and on that side, like we aren't seeing giant shooters right now because they're in the ag, right? Yeah. But when that ag's gone and all the movement gets condensed to 10% of what's there, you know, we'll have one of those farms. That's why I think the what, what we do is actually taking off because dude, we're poor. 
we can't we can't afford to buy anything like that and mm-hmm. i think a lot of people like if that that's the goal but like you can get on a big deer I was gonna say, today how else can you kill today? giants you know what i mean you know it's not uh, you do have to have some knowledge and like we actually have a couple of videos about this you know we call them sweet spots food betting water you don't have to have any money you, you can don't have to have any money go knock on any door and it's accessible to everybody and that people, is most people Although like that is such a dream of mine and we're definitely going to pursue that at some point. But sure. like right now, I, like, yeah, I would love to do that. But like it's just not really in the cards for me or him at the moment. So like why I think this method is taking off so much is because your average Joe can watch a YouTube video and be like, oh, wow. Like I, I guess because it's been a, it's been an excuse for a long time. How yeah. many times have you talked to somebody? And them hunt the same spot, the same stand that their grandpappy put Absolutely. up. Absolutely. And they are just, you know, I'm not seeing big, I'm not seeing big bucks. And it's mm-hmm. like kind of what you're doing, it takes effort. You have to yeah. go out and you have to know what you're doing. Um, and you can find out what to do by literally go, like it's sure. not hard. You, you know? just gotta put the effort in. Yeah, it's not hard. The concept isn't hard to understand. It just takes effort. Mm-hmm. You know, and that is, you know, and we unfortunately or we fortunately have the drive to actually do that. Well, think it, about it, man. I mean on your side. Um, and, and we're specifically talking about like just big bucks, like big deer, you know, mo- and especially in today with the way that leasing is and everything else, most people with only access options or public options are not able to consistently kill giant deer. It's not easy. I mean, it's just, you know, unless you are still holding on to like the random access farm that they're just not leasing because whether the money hasn't been put in front of them or Mm -hmm. Farmer Joe's still alive and it won't ever happen, you know, while he's above ground. Like, it's just, it's super, super rare that it could happen. Um, And so when you think about like what you guys are doing, I mean, you're basically just accessing kind of this limited availability of, of land with the opportunity any sit to kill a giant. These leasing, the leasing, you know, movement, I guess, is actually coming to Ohio. Like we're we're oh, we're, we're it's seeing absurd. it's Are you been seeing there, it in the, we're like seeing the it urban and suburban area. It oh, like is sure. somebody I mean, coming in and saying, "Hey, I'll lease I'll lease this five acres." That two forty that that was killed two forty one that was killed yeah. in Columbus. The dude supposedly was playing, paying five figures for two acres just for a shot holy at this deer. shit just for a shot at this deer now this deer was not on a uh, this was on a you know in between a city that you can't hunt and a city that you can't hunt like the border wow like this, this, railroad this railroad that it divided. sometimes crossed was the cat was the city limit line <laughs> so like bro was gambling paying that much money for a shot wow at this deer and i guess his i guess this you know, this has been happening for that's a whole nother level of le- like because people right now are like fifty dollars an acre, like this is ridiculous, you know. Dude, yeah, and this is well it's everybody comes out of state down south, everybody comes up and they <laughs> outbid everybody. Well the southern it, people it, 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 infiltrate a lot of places. Well, in that situation though, like it might as well be, you know, a hundred or two hundred fifty yeah, acres at least. Yeah, it's two like, acres is a fairly decent tract in that area it's yeah. probably more appealing because you, well, have to, you don't have to do with so much i mean it's just you sit down there's in one a corn spot pile. and well be, you're exactly gonna get a shot because of the, of the baiting and because of the nor- the bordering property it's like that property might as well be as valuable so as, strange mm-hmm. yeah but i mean that was for one deer i mean sure. what, would you, what would you pay for a 240 I'd pay five figures, but the thing is, <laughs> I mean, the, yeah. thing, the thing is it's not a guarantee it's not it's a risk and, and that's why it's hunting and he didn't kill it Oh, he didn't kill it. That that guy that paid that didn't kill it. Mm. Oh, he shot it. He didn't kill it. Somebody else killed it. See, mm. that's and we get we had this conversation, and it's it's a difficult one. It's you know we always want to be in the game for a big buck, like whether it's a, a one seventy or yeah, a, in any case, a two hundred would be amazing. It's just you know money has absolutely dominated the ability to be in the game for big mm-hmm. deer like that. I mean, that's what it comes down to. At like the end of the. Real big kind of is. You don't have to be a great hunter to be in the game on a 200 anymore if you have money. And it's so widespread. Like, even if you have had somebody come up and offer an obscene amount of money for your property, all the farmers are connected. You're like, oh, yeah, this guy came in and said he paid me seven grand to hunt yep. for dust during gun season. And then boom. And then that's their That's now the new baseline. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then it just increases. And that's why people say, oh, you know, waiting for the landmark. It's not going to drop. It's not. It may not blow up like it has in the last three or four years, but it, it isn't going to go down. 
Yeah, once you make seven grand, you're not going to take much. If somebody's money. willing to come in and pay seven grand an acre for something, or in Coshocton and and licking and stuff, it's like nine or ten for some of that wreck ground now. If somebody's willing to pay it, it's going to keep going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's the problem with like you know the, and, and I agree. Anybody, th- there are opportunities. Anybody can go out and, and do it. But like once the spots get kind of figured out or attention gets brought to it, it's like um, money comes in. People buy the property, they lease the property, or you know, there's just less and less of it. All that eventually is left is public land, and there's not enough of it, frankly, for people that are, are in that situation to where that's all they can afford or that's all they, they know. So, like, we, we talk a lot about that, or we have recently about, like, how, what are some potential yeah, avenues for creating more access, if that's a, a sort of tax or increased license sales or something that yields, you know, revenue to be able to buy back private land access for public consumption. Because it seems like a matter of time and, like, these urban areas that at some point people are going to realize like, you know, I don't need to go here and manage 400 acres. I could just go and lease this five acres and drop a corn pile and potentially kill Booner every year. That's what's nice about suburban though, is that you have a neighborhood that can have 50 houses. Mm. So 40, 40 of them can be leased, but you can get permission on any of the other 10 and still be in such the a game. weird way of thinking about it. But yeah, you're it right. It seems like a weird barrier to entry though. Like it, it seems like somebody, it takes a special person, I think, to to go and knock and, and get permission. Like, I think a lot of people are afraid of that oh, interaction. You can take away 90% oh, yeah. of the hunters. Yeah. yeah. It's too it's too much effort. It's too much you effort. To They'd there. rather pay more money to go out and sit where there's smaller deer. Right. That mm-hmm. they don't Just so they don't have to the deal with that. Owner. Yeah. <laughs> it's also a new learning game. If you've never hunted urban, it's completely sure. different than rural. The deer are sure. different. They act different. How you hunt is different. But, no, plus, on the outside, I mean, how many other people do you know are going to pay thousands of dollars for two or three acres even if it's a great two or three acres if you don't know that there's a guaranteed 240 sure i mean i'm not going to go out and pay for a spot that's a thousand dollars for it unless i know that there's a deer in the area right yeah it'll suck if we get to that point where people are uh, you know whether it's it's probably going to be out of staters but they're going to come in and say well yeah for three grand if i have a chance i'll lease this and and eventually again just like public is or or private you know permission stuff it's just all going to keep shrinking and then there's just less access here's another tip for you take it take a a thing out of like the oil and gas book is like what if you could go and say hey i'll pay you whatever to let me dump a corn pile and put a camera over it no hunting but if I if there's something that's worth hunting, I'll pay you I'll pay you this and and you'll let me hunt on it. That's a good idea. 20, I mean, twenty bucks to put up a camera on corn. It's a novel. Mm-hmm. Or it's a. I mean, the more places you can sample, the more likely you're going to get right. into them. There's it's like your temporary lease, and it's like we may or may not drill. We yeah. may or may not. Here's hunt. a here's that's, a crisp hundred. That's a gamble for me to go and do this. If you're like I, I think there's one in the area. Strike out. Have yeah. Not be there. Here's yet. a crisp yeah. hundred just to let me put a <clears throat> corn pile and a camera for whatever three weeks. Yeah. That's why I believe... And a free tattoo. Yeah. Right. Free tattoo. <laughs> right on your forehead. Yeah. That's why <laughs> I believe you. that, like, it's kind of taking off a little bit, the suburban and just urban hunting in general, is because it kind of evens the playing field a little bit. Sure. You don't need money. It'd be nice, and yeah. you, it would help. It seems cool, you too. You I don't mean, need it. People are looking at this as, like, you know, just like they are public land. It's like this cool little fad that... It's like you said, first. more yeah. people can do it. I mean, it's taken off because there's giant deer there. Yeah. It really is. It's, it's, th- it's cool at first, but I would still much rather hunt big land. 100%. And be away from people's houses and yeah. be able to do move around freely and not like, well, the property line's 40 yards there and yeah. 30 yards there. Yeah. I really miss... So, like, last year I spent all of my hunts pretty much in a suburban area, and that is, like... I it, it was a cool new experience for me to be like, dude, dude's mowing his lawn and has no <laughs> idea that I'm here. And then a booner walks out, you know, 40 minutes later. Yep. But I would still rather have the maneuverability of a giant farm where mm-hmm. I can actually like play a game with this deer. And That's can, the difference. It's like you're in a suburban setting. You're there to kill the deer and mm-hmm. a bigger setting. You're there to hunt the deer. Like it, it's just the the amount of area and the way it's set up is it's you know it's not killing because you're not doing it all the time but you're like he's either gonna be here or he's not or he's not and it, there's no chess game in it really mm-hmm. you know if he's not there it's just like the chess the chess the chess game is getting permission is before yeah, it's you before even suit up it's yep. looking on a map finding finding a big deer in an urban area without a lead most of the time. They're just leads that you find on Facebook because let's be honest, 
who's going to check these random suburban areas for giant deer? Like, oh, we do it. We do, and that's it. actually how I found the buck that I was chasing. And the reason that I haven't, like, that deer was actually not, like, nobody really knows where this deer is because it's it wasn't blasted on Facebook. It's not important you just to the community. Tripped across. It. We just we did a lot of e scouting. We were locating for that two forty. We were trying to find that. We were trying Before to find we the. More we were trying to find the two forty, and we didn't. You know, we didn't know where that two forty was. So we were like, well, we know it's in an urban area. So we just looked around in these urban areas, found these little pockets of woods, and you know, luck would have it, we found one. We yeah. Just, we just started knocking, and that was like a shot in the dark. I mean, that is missed, your hunt right we there. Missed, it was a shot in the dark. We missed the opportunity at the two forty. But, you but it landed us, you know, it it landed us on a shot at the sleeper deer that nobody knew about. And uh, that's know. so crazy. Yeah. yeah. That's your chess match right there. Yeah. So all it's like happening before you before even, you suit up. Yeah. But it's it's before you suit up. It's all we spend countless hours on Google Earth and Spartan Forge and just where we have pins everywhere, you know, ask yeah. here, it's a ask lot of here, fun ask here. It, it, getting new pieces and putting up cameras. And well, I was going to ask, are you talking areas. to locals too? Like, you know, not trying to tip your game or anything, oh, but just listen. trying to listen. People talk, especially yeah. like with any little bit of fame that we have, people will just talk and talk. If you just sit there and let them talk, they'll tell you everything they know. Yeah. And you'll get a tip and then it's like, we got to go. We need to see it's something in that area. Go knock on a door, put up a camera in a corn pile. If there's deer there, you'll find them. The game. If and not, yeah, we're not, we also don't like step on anybody's toes. If they're like, yeah, my buddy Jack's got this permit and they're telling us everything and we have <laughs> yeah. the pin to this deer. Like we're not going to swoop in and steal a deer, but if it's two forty. We might. I mean, if it's a 240, I might swoop in. and I'd be right under that some bitch's tree stand. <laughs> hey, buddy, yeah. Here's three like, grand. Screw just yeah. being 100% honest, like, we just try to avoid all other hunters. Yeah. Like, just in general. Even well, if that's going to make year, it it's a hunter. better experience. I mean, you're already in a, like, highly populated area. Like, you still want some of that hunt experience, which is yeah. not a guy right there and right there. Three corn piles, like, in a triangle here. Sure. Yeah. Like, which corn piles are you going to yeah. take? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's also like I think takes away some of the authentic hunting is like when the woods wakes up, you look over there's street lights on, people get on the school bus. Yeah. It's like it's not the same as being out there in God's country and mm. you don't hear or see anything all morning. Yeah, dude, as much as I hate cows, one of my favorite things to hear from the tree stands like you just on a frosty morning to hear yep. mm. distant, you know you're out there. Mm. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the classic Kansas call. Mm. Hear that cracking. Yeah, yeah, we don't we don't get that much in Columbus. Well, <laughs> no. well, the best case scenario is you could do it all, right? I mean, like, yeah, it, it would be it would be awesome. Just like I'm saying, you know, to have a home farm and to have you know surrounding yep. farms, it, you know, whether it's permission or you own or it's a lease or whatever or public. It, in a best case scenario, you can kind of capitalize on on all of it and lay it out throughout the course of the season, where you're like, okay, I have a 240, I'm and I'm gonna kill them, you know, in uh, in that situation. But I've got a farm we're gonna go out and spend two weeks on or whatever, and, and this and that, and kind of get the best out of the entire season. Yeah, follow the deer. If they're in an urban area, you gotta know how to do that. If they're in a big rur- a big rural farm, you gotta know how to do that. You gotta be able to adapt and yeah, yeah. learn different ways to hunt. And well, we're by no means any experts on that, obviously, but it's the pursuit and it's the chase that is the lifestyle for us and. Well, I think we're successful or not, it's still fun. Like you guys saying, going out west, what you guys will find is probably the more access you gain, the the better you hone your skills at this urban thing, especially in Ohio. Is you guys are going to kill your box and then you're done in Ohio. Yeah. Now you got to go somewhere else, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? And that's that's where it's start- and that's kind of how Jared and I. Not that we like tag out in every state, but it's like we should have another opportunity, and then we should have another opportunity. We just don't want it to end. You know, if I kill in Ohio, I want to be able to go to Kentucky. If I kill in Kentucky, I want to go to Illinois. You know, it's 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 just it's a balancing act of trying not to overextend yourself because you can only hunt so many places. But having something next, you know, what if I do kill one in Ohio? Okay, yeah. Or what if like I don't have anything, or the weather is bad, or whatever? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna jump to this one. Yeah, we want to do one other state. We definitely want to do one other state. And a lot of people are like, "Oh, you guys are big urban hunters." Like. We literally just did that last year. Sure. So it's not like we're big urban guys. We've done it a couple of years. I last do year think I do think there's something with it, and I do think that it's it's a the permission game is a little bit easier in the urban game because there's just so many different opportunities. I'd look in Kentucky. Kentucky is right over the river. Kind of right we over the river for. from Cincinnati. That nor- it's not far from you guys, so you yeah. could spend enough efficiency time there. Mm-hmm. But there's some giants in there. We would love to do that. Honestly, we were talking season. about that on on yeah. the way here. We like open up September second. Wow! Like so, you could 
be done. Pe- what's this? The twenty second? People are listening to this, yeah. so I can't do the math because it's one a.m. But it's like about ten days. Yeah, and I'm I'm killing a velvet. That's the plan, at least. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. But yeah, plan. I mean that you're a month ahead of what of Ohio. Yeah. So you've got a whole month to be getting content and hunting and doing mm-hmm. things, and then Ohio opens up. Yeah, it's a that's nice definitely stagger. the goal. You know, so if any of our viewers that's are cheap. listening, that's that's, that's why you go point. out west. That's why you do what you're doing in South Dakota. That's why Jared and I started out there. It's like, dude, we cannot September first out here. Or first week in September, like, I, yes. yeah, I think you guys will fall in love with mule deer. You will. Like it's it's that that'll be a hunt of a lifetime for you. Probably two very mm-hmm. different styles, but you'll quickly figure out like, ooh, I love doing this, mm-hmm. and then you'll be ready to come back at some point to and wait till. I'm I'm a filmer that got into hunting don't get me wrong hunting is like i think about hunting more than i think about filming but i'm definitely like i started out as a filmer first and i'm just excited oh, to dude, just have scenery and stuff besides somebody's sick. backyard you like know? the badlands is nothing a, but scenery is freaking awesome it's a really cool place odd you know just kind of in the like how barren it is it's one of the but prettier parts of the country it's the beautiful badlands is, yeah yeah, just and like are, just rock faces and like and sunsets. And early like September, it'll the be, rock it'll, is like almost white too, right? Like white, yeah. red. Oh, yeah, it's be and then it'll be it'll be you know eighty five, ninety in a day, and then it'll just it'll be fifty at night. Yeah, you'll feel it'll just be hope, the first just hope fill it of fall. Rain. It'll probably feel good at first. <laughs> yeah, if it rains, uh, pack up. Yeah, you're. <laughs> it's like literally like slip and slide trying to walk around out there. It just gets so soupy. And Do you feel like you could make it happen though, like if. Like, would you attempt to stalk a buck in the rain? Uh, no, we just ate breakfast. And we drank didn't beer. have the opportunity. We were tagged out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, Jeremy shot his the second day. I shot mine the third, and then we drank the rest of our beer and cooked the rest of our eggs, and then we peeled out. Yeah, everybody else was like, "This sucks," and we're like, "We're out of here." And it did rain the third or fourth day, so hey, it poured. It's a ten day trip. If we tag out in the first three days, I'm st- I'm just gonna stay. It's awesome. Ex- it's a cool place. Explore it. Some of those we found. It took us two trips basically, but we started like, oh, there's this little restaurant in town, like because it, it looks like ghost towns out there. Like they're literally abandoned. And then like you all of a sudden we saw this like we thought it was just a bar. Little hidden gems. Yeah, and yeah. and well, like, well, the oh, guy had gonna... mentioned a guy mentioned it like at yep. the travel center or something like a couple towns away. They're like, oh, you going over there? There's a nice restaurant down here. You should check it out. Oh. We're like, what? what? Where? <laughs> yeah. And there was this guy had like a five. He was like a five star chef. Like, he was like a Michelin no chef. Oh, sick. Yeah, he was. He lived in Italy. Like it's. It was like a legit Italian restaurant. We were the only nope. people in the restaurant too. He like bought it before he came to see. He goes, oh, nobody told me this was a wasteland. Well, I thought he was South in the middle Dakota. of the city. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, we were. I mean, after six days of basically surviving in a fifth wheel with like four guys, like we all it got was like rib eyes and it, big it was a freaking and, meal. It was yeah. great. Yeah, that that capped it pretty well, mm. but yeah, man, you guys will freaking love it. It's it's gonna be awesome. It'll just be an experience at the least. Yep. Even if we come up empty-handed, like, oh, you'll love it. I feel like it'll Driving be one of out? the better experiences. Yeah, that's the plan. Yeah, uh, we you guys are like three hours closer than we, we were. <laughs> yeah, we just we drive through the night and twenty-seven hours. Oh my god! Yeah. You drove through the night? Oh yeah, like just straight shot. Just straight. I think right. so. Yeah, and we're old, so Ours yeah, like we have 15, no excuse now. Fifteen or sixteen hours. Just that's drink, terrible. drink like five Red Bulls. Oh, that's like nothing. That's off. like yeah. when we drive to Kansas, sixteen hours. Yeah, yeah. no, I just we don't want to fly with my bow. No, we we uh, drive out there. Don't. You all have too much gear. I don't I, know if I, I've ever you, flown. To where are you staying? How are you staying? Uh, I have a buddy out there who's like, like he's a guide or whatnot. Oh, so you got a place to stay? Yeah, oh, he's got lodging. Yeah, we would pick up a fifth wheel in like what was it, Bismarck? I closer or Rapid City. Rapid City, South Dakota. We did two different places. Yeah, so we picked up a fifth wheel. We drove the whole way out there, picked up a fifth wheel in Rapid City. Fargo. This is where we picked it up the first first time. time. And then it's like four hours to where we were set up camp. And so we just... And by the the end of seven days with four guys, that uh, that Blackwater tank was peaked. Bremen. Yeah, no more in it. Which is two guys (laughs) that we we were like. The first trip, we were like mean and and quick. Yeah. Yeah, lean and mean. We're just excited to just do more like that. Just do take more trips, go to different, you know, states. I'll make good content. At the end of the day, like when it gets real late, I get a little bit in my feels. But you know, like I just, I, I just want to make memories and I want to film it. Like yeah, that was, that was low key the reason that we started Creakings was we wanted to get that buck on camera. But too, like it's so fun to watch oh, your yeah. old videos. I just do that. 
by myself sometimes. I'll be like, hey, this video was three years ago. And it's really funny to watch like how the editing has sure. grown since then. But it's just fun to like remember the memories and stuff. And I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't you, know, man. You guys will <laughs> like it, man. It'll be great content. Yeah. Well, we look forward to it, man. We appreciate it. So right now, where where's everybody seeing you? YouTube mainly? Yeah. YouTube you and Instagram is our two main platforms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep, YouTube, uh, Kings for Creek Kings Outdoors. You can't miss the logo. It's just a little, yep. a little yellow crown. Yellow. Yep. Yep. We've got about seventeen or Eight, close to eighteen thousand subscribers 18, 18 at yesterday. at the moment. This video will be released, so definitely nice. maybe nineteen check or us out. by then. Yeah, yeah maybe. maybe check us out. We got a pretty loyal listening group here. There you go. They'll uh, they'll give you some love. Yeah. And then Instagram. Yes, Instagram is also just, just Creek Kings. Creek Kings. Perfect. Same guys. logo. Well, we obviously appreciate you. It is, it's literally 1 a.m. It's past my bedtime. Oh, that's beautiful. 1 a.m. We have a three hour drive home. So, needless I don't to know. say, I'm stop. crazy. Yeah. We're stopping at the gas station. and I'd crush some like Mickey D's or something to at least get me through that. <sighs> Waffle House gets us through those late oh, nights. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> we'll get to your house at 4 30, and then I got a 30 minute drive home, like home at 5. But then you get to sleep all day. You're sleep off. Sleep till 2. Yeah. You're off the next three days. Yeah. 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 You'll be all right. I'll be yeah. all right. Screw you, buddy. I'm a worried about I got to go back to work. Yeah. It's fine. I'm usually a zombie at work anyway. Yeah. To whoever's tattoo you're doing tomorrow. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> right. yeah. 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 Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Seven Red Bulls in. Yep. He's like, don't yeah. worry. It's supposed to look like that. I'll just like black out and yeah. wait. And he's like, oh, it, it, it looks, looks good. good. Yeah, it looks good. Let me wipe that. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Nobody right. ever says it looks bad. Nobody's like, oh, crap. Yeah, we're like, hey, can you fix that? Like, nope. Yeah, like who confronts their barber like hey, yeah this, this looks sucks. like shit they're usually just say it looks good and they cry in their car and then walk yeah. out yeah, yeah. yeah. never yeah. Come back. never going back to that guy <laughs> <laughs> i've done that well for sure keep us posted this thanks year thanks for having us on yeah appreciate man you no we yeah. appreciate yeah. you coming yeah. in it was fun and and we definitely need to circle back up maybe uh, maybe at an earlier hour in the night yeah yeah, yeah. dude <laughs> maybe, we're maybe just gonna take off work next season. time for sure i I didn't realize this was this far away. I was expecting like an hour and a half. I drive. told him it was three hours, and he didn't pay attention. He's still yeah. committed. My my life's pretty. Busy we'll do the next one. I'll, I'll be in the chair. You can be doing my sleeve. Dude, come and to we'll Ohio. We'll just do a lot. I'll come to. You. I'm, I'm, you I'm not going to make you come here. I'll go out there. Cool. I'll come out there. One hundred percent. We'll do a little. You give me a sick design. Session. I'll come out. We'll do a private studio session. I got you. Nick, you in? Tattooed on the face. It looked cool. Your girlfriend will love it. Trust me. <laughs> You're getting it. <laughs> Done. It's next, too late. It's next, too late. Next, next, it's an order. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah, guys, we appreciate coming in. And um, anybody listening, go and check out the Creek Kings YouTube and stuff. We'll be looking at I watched, uh, I think, your heartbreak stuff here just recently. Yeah. And I saw all the Goliath stuff. So, yeah, man, we're going to be sick for some some new content from you guys now here in this story and how everything's going. So Absolutely. Are I there bet. new, like, episodes dropping soon? or? Yeah, we're, we're right now we've had a lot of people asking for, like, a bag dump as yep. far as, like, hunting stuff, camera stuff, everything that we're going to basically be using. Okay. For whitetail deer season, so that'll be coming probably in the next week or two. Yeah. Is everything from last year released? Like you guys didn't hold hunts over from last year? We, we have hunts hold, held, especially from his, uh, just because whenever that film comes just out, just to keep put. You, so oh, you're yeah. putting the whole story together, right? So I didn't, I didn't tell the whole story with King Neptune, which is the buck. Like I said, we've talked about mm -hmm. early, earlier in this podcast. I didn't release all the footage, and there's a lot of this. There's a lot to the story that we just didn't talk about because I wanted it to be fresh. And honestly, it was just a long video because I wanted to recap the whole sure. season. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of held back footage and just cool little stuff that happened. Notes I got from other hunters in the area, like so. Until the cool story stuff. is completed, you'll drop a. Until whole the story is completed, yeah, I'll probably hold it. You know, gotcha. So. I mean, how are we looking for this season? You don't have to give us. Uh, we we feeling pretty good about this season We're so far. Good. I mean, it's it's August at this point. Yeah. Yeah. So we we put cameras up, but a lot of the spots that we put our cameras up, fall spots. It's fall spots. So gotcha. like We we're doing so much summer glassing. It's insane. But like, there's only so much summer glassing can get you, especially whenever you see these big deer, and it's like they. It, we, it tells we, you. The we area. know the spot, and we know that they're gonna disappear. So. We're just constantly trying to find new spots. We've knocked on some permission pieces the past week and have gotten a couple really exciting yeses. So um, there could be bigger deer, but we definitely have some locked in our sights. So Fair definitely enough. stay tuned. Uh, we also have a Discord. If you guys don't know about Discord, it's a cool little like chatting app. We we post a lot of our like exclusive content and stuff in there. Oh, cool! Oh, hang so on. don't say exclusive like. Well, that. not exclusive content, hey, but yo. like there's stuff that we post in there that we don't post to our Instagram and we don't show on YouTube. Like nudes. 
Uh, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Our exclusive. Just, yeah, only Justin's fans? exclusive hey, content. Hey. Justin's exclusive content. Exclusive. Only kings. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> only kings. Hey, I like that. Uh, Trademark uh, now. I'm sure that one's taken already. <laughs> only kings. Yeah. That'd be badass. Nick, can you look um, that up for us real quick? Yeah. Shirts are already made. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Nick's, Nick's already trademarked it. Shirts are made. Mm. No, this has been fun. Yeah, thanks, been thanks. yeah, thanks a lot for having us. Yeah, you guys are welcome anytime. For real. If you want to make the drive down, you can just swing, swing down. But we'll make room for you. Cool. Awesome. Sounds good. Well, cool, guys. Well, we appreciate it. And we appreciate everyone listening to episode 141, 141 with the Creek Kings. I paid attention. Later. It's take me. Oh.